Welcome to the Granada Forum. Uh, the Granada Forum is an informational resource center that provides an alternative media for America and the world to view their own opinions and to think their own minds. Tonight, on December 7, 2007, six, excuse me, 2006, it's Pearl Harbor Day at the Granada Forum. And we're, we're coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. Can everyone hear me? Great. Um, so let me bring in this wonderful guest so that you can see what I know. Um, uh, Dr. Deagle, uh, Dr. William Deagle, is the founder of Nutra Medical since 1999. Dr. Deagle is a teacher of medicine, a student, and uh, he prompted, uh, proctored at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. Dr. Deagle, Dr. Deagle, We'll be speaking on a variety of subjects, uh, matters of national security and the dangerous situations that are evolving in this country today. So without any further ado, let's give Dr. William Deagle a warm round of applause at the Granada Forum. Thanks, everyone. I really want to thank everybody that came out tonight. And as I say, everybody that's here is supposed to be here. However, many or few there are, I hope there are many that are going to be watching this on DVD and online because some of the things I'm going to say tonight hopefully will not only inform but transform you so that when you're finished the seminar tonight, there'll be things you'll hear tonight that you've never heard in your whole life, even if you've been studying this area for a long time. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is going to it'll integrate. You always learn what you know that's related to things you previously knew. And some of those are not just physical things cause, because we're a spirit being we know things in the intellectual realm, but we also know spirit words and spirit thoughts and realities. And those who us realize that the ultimate problems in our society are not a technical one, they're always spiritual. And uh, that goes transcends religion. Religion is a substitute. So we're going to talk about four different talks tonight. And if I can get my, uh, my PowerPoint behaving here, we are ready to view the show. Um, firstly, conspiracy realities of 9-11 to avian flu and beyond. And I'm going to deal with both uh, fact, not conjecture. I'll, and I, I try to give you a, both the forest and a tree's view so you'll see things tonight that you probably you knew and things you didn't know. Some of it's going to be very shocking. Um, people like myself, people like Eric Schein, who's also on RBN, uh, he uh, has a wonderful show on the weekend. And I, I don't know if Eric, I don't think Eric made it tonight. Is Eric here? But uh, Eric may be online. He lives here in California. We also have um, uh, people like uh, Stephen E. Jones, a professor at the University of Utah, that actually uh, presented information proving that Thermate was involved with the uh, bombs in WTC, which, of course, cut up the building. It was not uh, jet aircraft. <clears throat> and I want to show you information tonight that will prove that there's a lot more to this. And, uh, and I'm going to bring you not just at the end of one maze, but I'm going to show you the matrix of all of the mazes, hopefully, tonight. As far as the, as I say, the rabbit trail will take you. So uh, without ado, let's go on to the next slide. Uh, in 1995, I was working at uh, Penrose St. Francis Hospital in Colorado Springs as an occupational doctor. And what they like to do is they uh, had a habit of wanting to uh, hire civilian doctors. I was a civilian, although I'd worked with the military many years in both Canada and the United States. I'm a dual citizen. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, licensed in uh, three provinces. Is it cutting it off? Ooh, how's that doing that? Um, I think maybe the slide projector can be moved just a bit. Well, yeah, I'm not sure if the... Oh, okay. All right. I'll continue because you'll get all of the gist of this and you'll be able to get the PowerPoints later. You can get them online. Um, I worked um, at Penrose St. Francis Hospital and we uh, had uh, my boss, Major George Swinder, was supposed to actually do the exit exam on the Oklahoma City Forensic Munitions Team that came back from the Murrah Building when it was exploded in 1995. And uh, he was away and I was the senior doctor. I'm uh, going to be 55 this February. I've been in practice for almost 30 years. Practice about everything you can imagine from emergency department, intensive care, burn units, trauma units, uh, ICUs in the middle of nowhere, 300 miles from everywhere you can imagine. 
in the middle of mountains to uh, military and nuclear medicine and uh, also handled the teams working on Operation Top Off and movement of our bioweapons, nuclear weapons and uh, also as facilities such as U.S. Space Command, Strategic Defense Command, Star Wars, Falcon Air Force Base, etc. And what happened is in this time one of the five gentlemen told me that he wanted me to do further evaluations of him because he had radiation exposure. And of course, I was a chemist before I went into medicine and did marine bacteriology research. I was a charter member of Greenpeace back in the early 70s before I went into medicine. And I said, well, this was an ANFO bomb. It was a ammonium nitrate bomb. That couldn't cause radiation burns. He said, you don't understand. I said, look, unless you tell me the truth, I'm not going to do anything for you. You know, gruff old ER doc. And uh, he said, after he broke down after about 15 minutes, he actually started to almost cry. Uh, he uh, was pupils pinpoint, ashen white, scared to death. And this guy's a special op military munitions guy that works around things like, you know, high explosives. So obviously, that's not the kind of person that's a special op guy that gets scared easy. Uh, so he told me in great detail over the next two hours and 15 minutes how the Oklahoma City Murrow buildings were brought down by micro-nukes that were put in there, U.S. Army Corps engineer, by FBI and ATF agents, and by Thermate and other high explosives, including two micro-nukes they removed, and a C4 pineapple and another C4 that were placed on the inside pillars of the building. Uh, I filed that away, but uh, four and a half months later, <coughs> his uh, commanders at Fort Carson found out, and he got court-martialed. I've never heard from him again. God knows what happened to him. And when they found out, they uh, called, hauled me into the conference room, and tried to threaten me, and I said, <clears throat> you don't threaten me. I said, because uh, they were in the process of trying to fire me, you know, this is they call a little rendition. I said, you're going to cut me a check for 35000 a letter of reference, and if you come within 500 miles of me or my family with any of your operatives, I said, I, I will or my buddies will take you out. And I met it. And so I got my check cut in it within a half an hour, and a letter of reference, and... Um, I left there, but I filed it away. I didn't talk to anybody until I brought the information out on Alex Jones' show a few years ago. Um, in my exposures, um, I have been in underground cities. I have worked for the Iridium Satellite Project. I've been on the, uh, the doctor for U.S. Space Command, Strategic Defense, the Echelon Project, and the World Identification. And I've taken care of people that have been in the most classified facilities on the planet in Colorado. And Colorado has more classified material underground there and more computing power, quantum computing, than all the rest of the planet to get, uh, put together by a very large order of magnitude. And most of these facilities are in underground cities. And I was in one of them, and it was very impressive. It's uh, Shriver Air Force Base, east, 18 miles east of Colorado Springs. And the facility... Um, the main facility building is actually underground, about a quarter mile, and um, it was shielded in two and a half inches of seamless stainless steel, ringed by an anti-missile system and scalar weapons, as well as a full tactical division of uh, Star Wars weaponry. And uh, they had a quantum array, and I physically walked through the quantum array. It's gallium arsenide Cray-5 uh, computers. You may have heard that these other teraflop computers are the most powerful in the world, and they're liars. The most powerful computer was developed by Seymour Cray, who 11 months after his discovery, his uh, systems went uh, section 11, I believe it is, chapter 11, and uh, he died on uh, the uh, I-25 freeway just north of Air Force Academy in one of these weird accidental deaths where a car crossed the freeway in complete uh, bright, clean blacktop and completely T-boned his car and crushed him and killed him instantly. car crossed the freeway in complete uh, bright, clean black top and completely T-boned his car and crushed him and killed him instantly. So Seymour Cray had done the impossible. He'd actually, without uh, zero gravity, created a gallium arsenide chip that had to be created at almost minus 200 degrees Kelvin in order to create this chip that allowed quantum computing. To give you an idea, the Cray 4 computer, Cray 5 can do the calculations uh, in teraflops that's equivalent to 100,000 Cray 4s. Gives you an idea just how powerful this is. And I'll show you tonight why quantum computing is part of the matrix they're building and why this is so important. When I walked through the array, they had hundreds and hundreds of Cray computers all in a giant cube underground uh, connected by fiber optic high-speed uh, networks. 
And they weren't just using regular, uh, they were using ultraviolet fiber optics, which is much, much higher speed uh, information transfer. Huge cables the size of your thumb, hundreds and hundreds of them connecting through this array. And uh, <coughs> if you knew the computing power, they are, and I was told this by my NSA contacts because they had very high contacts, people that literally on a need-to-know basis the president does not have access to. So a lot of the people don't understand that most of the senior people in our Congress and Senate, if they're watching this video, I'm going to tell them stuff that they don't know even if they're on the Armed Services Committee. They will not know what I know. Part of the reason is I would exchange information and have a photographic memory with many of the people in different divisions of the military and intelligence, and they would freak out when I would tell them out of their highly compartmentalized area exactly what was going on in the next room or the next building or the next facility underground. Um, <clears throat> the uh, Echelon project is just the tip of the iceberg. They have had a database, not only of everybody's dial tone, and identification data of every citizen in every westernized nation on the planet, but they have been doing this for well over 26 years, and that database is all ready to stick the chip in you and track you for your global identification. I was actually given a private audience for a gentleman in back in 1998, who in 1995 had actually done a presentation to Lockheed Martin and Lucent Technologies, and have a 600 and some page copy of his patent application for the world identification and he went over the details and the uh, people at Lockheed Martin and Lucent told him that his information was uh, useful but they'd all gone well beyond that and they, he thought of a few good ideas that they'd incorporate so they, they said well are you going to buy my patent or incorporate? No, we don't need you. So they've been doing this for a long time. The smart highways, the iridium satellite system, the, the uh, cell towers, all of these things are integrated into a system that is literally beyond your imagination. As far as you think any of these B-movies or technologies, it is orders of magnitude and ages beyond anything you can imagine. And it exists today already. All that is left is the implementation. So in, 19, uh, 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 in 1999, I met uh, with uh, the people that we were doing our operational tests for Operation Top Off and Dark Winter with Dr. Jay Reddington, uh, from the University of Colorado, Department of Infectious Disease at the VA, and the Center for Disease Control Director uh, for the FBI, uh, Director for Bioterrorism. And uh, we were doing uh, simulations. We did uh, bioterrorism simulations at the Performing Arts Center in um, Denver, and also at the uh, uh, 17th Avenue. And in the Performing Arts Center, we did a simulation where we pretended it was a release of a bubonic plague and tried to simulate if people would gather the correct information at the local hospitals to be able to back calculate out when the release was and who would have been gotten sick and knowing how long the incubation period, who would survive. Well, we failed miserably on that and in a test in anthrax sprayed of a second floor window uh, on, se on 17th Avenue. We also did a simulation uh, in Boulder with a supercomputer there, a National Weather Service supercomputer there, um, uh, and found that we pretended on this supercomputer we did a simulation of someone coming in from Cairo, Egypt with injected with uh, weaponized uh, smallpox. And uh, our computers predicted that 93 uh, countries and 93 million Americans would be infected in, 93 day, in 90 days. Uh, that, of course, is a computer simulation. There's lots of parameters that, uh, you know, make, that would confound that reality. But nevertheless, they've been doing all these simulations. Well, <coughs> on March 1, of uh, uh, 2001, um, a couple years after this, I met again uh, at a bioterrorism conference with Dr. Reddington, the FBI and CDC directors, and the FBI director leaned across the table at lunch because we had a private lunch because I was one of the inner circle and said to me uh, in no certain terms that there will be a Pearl Harbor event. Interesting, it's Pearl Harbor Day today, December 7, 2006. And this event will, with a 95% probability, bring about martial law in America and a national ID with an implantable chip. And he said all of those things, and he repeated them three times so that it would sink in. And I asked him questions for the next hour and a half, because he wouldn't tell me straight out exactly what simulations, because we talked about everything from jet aircraft going into buildings to micronukes in cities to bioterrorism release to things in the water to nanoweapons to all kinds of things. And... Uh, 
one of the scenarios that was one of the top three or four was uh, jet aircraft going into World Trade Center towers. So when they say, when you hear Condoleezza Rice lying and saying that they never thought of it, they told me that there were actually simulations of jet aircraft planned to go in at that time, uh, later that year, probably in September, uh, into the WTC towers. So when I was driving my children, because I lived in South Col D Denver, in Hounds Ranch, driving them to the charter school one mile from Columbine, I was enraged. And the rage isn't even a strong enough word to understand that they actually took those towers down, and I knew that they did it. Because I have a, you know, advanced training in uh, technology. I was supposed to go into nuclear physics at MIT, and I went into honors biochemistry and completed my PhD research project in five months at age 20. I didn't write my thesis because I went into medicine, so I'm not exactly stupid. And when these people did this, I knew that they had not only struck a dagger into the hearts of Americans, but they killed people in 82 nations. And uh, this is the sentinel event of our century, not just in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm, because we're actually approaching a thing called the nexus, which I'm going to talk in my fourth talk about. Um, when we have whistleblowers like Stephen Jones, with his thermite and his very solid science proving it, and Dr. Ward, who spoke on my radio show a few months ago, was a medical doctor who was retired about nine years, who did a very recent analysis proving that there were micro-nukes in the building, build, you know, cars and other vehicles were melted on one side, not the other, uh, particleization of two-thirds of the total mass of the World Trade Center towers that were turned into nanoparticles. The only thing that could have done that was nukes. There is no other conclusion. It's not something that's open to discussion or anything else because even high explosives couldn't have done what was found there. And there were reports, not only by the uh, Pentagon, uh, but by other independent sources that there were radioisotopes detected at some distance away from the WCC towers as well as uh, the uh, Pentagon. So um, whether they had a DU tip missile or a small bomb or micronukes, there were radioisotopes involved as well as the high explosives thermate uh, in the bringing down of those towers. And from my contacts in the NSA, they were uh, operationally ordered by the Jesuits through the Project Omega, which is a, uh, the final f uh, implementation of the project conceived by the Nazis during the Second World War, before the Second World War in the 1930s. Project Omega is a super agency that oversees all intelligence agencies on the planet. Their underground facilities are in Colorado. It was completed under the uh, operational directorship of George uh, Herbert Walker Bush, the senior Bush. And uh, this agency is involved not only with uh, all the deep underground bases, but also our off-world facilities and our off-world fleets of uh, uh, space-based aircraft and other advanced technologies that you can't imagine exist. So <coughs> the uh, level of evil is beyond imagination. So <coughs> the uh, level of evil is beyond imagination. Um, Let's see, cooperate. Now I just have to get it to change. There we go. Well, the Patriot Act, does anybody know what Patriot means? Well, what it means is providing advanced technologies to receive and intercept operational terrorism. It has nothing to do with patriotism. Uh, this Patriot Act, by the way, I had my special op in Delta because I taught the course February 12th, uh, 2002, to the special op in Delta uh, we're auditioning uh, in my, uh, we're auditing my course for the American Academy of Environmental Medicine. I was a primary professor teaching the course in bioterrorism in St. Louis in, in February 12, 2002, and I reviewed all of the uh, history of bioterrorism and the operational dangers of, uh, of both military operations, detecting public health and response. And after, for the next three or four days, I exchanged stories with all these guys, and their eyes lit up, even fellows that had been in lots of countries, doing lots of bad things, killing people and breaking things. But I freaked them out, but what I knew, and they taught me a lot of stuff. And uh, uh, they're my best buddies, because they love hearing somebody like me that's out of the box, and not afraid. I'm not afraid to die tonight, because if we don't fight this, we're all dead. And we're not just talking about death of our civilization, we're talking about death of our planet. Because what I'm going to show you tonight, we have roughly a year. And that's, not, that's a pretty hard estimate. We've got about a year, year and a half maybe, to turn this thing around, just like the Titanic heading toward the iceberg. And if we don't stop this, and there's so many events that are converging, it's over. 
it's not only over for humanity, it's over for our planet. Uh, because we're involved in such something much bigger than the New World Order. And that's why when you hear various patriots to talk about one issue or another and they lock onto it alone, I'm going to show you the forest and the trees so you'll see things tonight that even if you focus on a few issues, you're going to hear things that are going to be very shocking to you tonight. So um, uh, the large sections of the Patriot Act I actually received from my special op Delta buddies that I taught uh, and worked with back in Colorado. And uh, I received them two years before 9-11. That's interesting, isn't it? Parts of the Patriot Act have been written, and I was told by my friends, were around, sitting around documents in the Pentagon and elsewhere for up to 12 to 15 years before 9-11. Uh, so they've been in the works for decades. Um, and again, just repeating that, if you see that statement there, there will be a Pearl Harbor event. And... Uh, that's serious when we're talking about a Pearl Harbor event. Now, the next big thing you need to be really aware of is the avian flu. And I'm going to tell you a story about this. And you might hear disinformation saying it's not going to be a problem. Don't believe it. This is the Brainiac virus. This virus is the most intelligent, deadly weapon that has ever been released. There is nothing like it in history. And the reason why, and I'll tell you why it is, and this is a very interesting story. I've had Dr. Henry L. Nyman on my program from Recombinomics uh, for the past two years until about four months ago. Henry was on about every two weeks. He's also on the Jeff Rents show. And um, I like to do a lot of my own producing. So I spend dozens and hundreds of hours. Sometimes I'm working 20, 22 hours a day trying to collect material and analyze it. Because I know when I look around to see if they're my colleagues, my doctors, I call my quivering white-coated colleagues who are shivering jellyfish, if they will back me up or if they'll try to corroborate our scientists. Well, Dr. Nyman is a genius. There's no doubt he has more patents on gene analysis on viral sequencing and recombination, and his theories are correct. Recombination is how viruses change. They don't change by mutation. Contrary to Dr. Fauci, the monster Fauci who was in behind the HIV spread and in research, and Dr. Gerberding, who is the head of the Center for Disease Control, who is also involved intimately with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease and the World Health Organization on the resurrection and the promulgation of this plague. And the money trail goes right back to the Rothschilds and the Jesuits. Okay. Now, I received the documents when I went to speak against fetal tissue transplantation and cyborg research at Human Life International, a private audience with the board, International Board, March 16, 1997. And when I spoke to the International Board of their top doctors and scientists at HLI in Zurich, they gave me almost eight inches of documentation, not only about the avian flu, but about the AIDS virus and about vaccines to create sterile populations in sub-Saharan Africa to get rid of 185 excess sub-Saharan Africans. The AIDS virus was created directly under the control of the World Health Organization and the globalists, and uh, I received those documents. And I personally was recruited in 1974 to take a year off of medical school and do my PhD in virology with the CIA in Uganda to actually work on retroviruses and recombination to actually create the AIDS virus. So I turned it down, but I know firsthand, not secondhand about this, but I have further corroboration from my documents I got March 16, 1997. Well, the most disturbing is the avian flu. The avian flu was created with a bioengine using gene fragments of deceased miners in, in Alaska. They took these fra fragments and using a bioengine actually recreated the virus from nothing. They succeeded in doing this <coughs> at the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta. We know the names of the scientists involved. But the real story comes when you actually go letter by letter. And I'm a details person, if you can probably understand that. But I'm also a spiritual person. But I'm a real details person. I want to know every dot and comma and the, which way the comma is twisted. And so I started analyzing the DNA sequences over the last few years and spending many, many hours on the phone off air talking to Dr. Nyman, pulling every article in the world up on avian flu. And what I discovered was very, very disturbing. The, the lethal genes, if you look at this, the same gene polymorphisms that killed my great -grandmo my grandmother's brother and sister in the 1918-1919 pandemic. Her sister died, 
And then a week later, because the brother had held his sister at graveside before the coffin was closed, he died. So I have a personal vendetta with this. Because this virus, by the way, you should know the 1918 flu was created through viral pass-through technologies that were being developed under Vice President, uh, the Vice President uh, at the time of Theodore Roosevelt. So we've actually had bioweapons programs in operation for over a century in America. The virus originated in Fort Lupton, Kansas, beside a military base. And you, if you line up the DNA letters, the DNA letters are a perfect match for the human WSN33 human strain of virus, which is the oldest strain in, in American databases, and the Iowa pig flu strain from the 1930s. The oldest strains, you can line up the DNA letters and show that the 1918 flu is a human-pig hybrid. But what you find is the H5N1, the very first strain analyzed, which is... <coughs> we're going to start uh, the next talk, and now that we're tiring you out, we're going to ask to talk about wellness now. Uh, and then my last talk is going to be talking about some stuff that I'm sure you're going to want to know. We're going to save the best for the last. Uh, but this talk here, you should know, this is for those people who want to live, or if they're sick, they uh, want to live longer. Uh, it's a t living, basically, solutions to wellness challenges in a toxic world. And once you see this, you realize why the medical system is so goddamn corrupt. And uh, when I say that, I'm not saying it to be obscene. I'm saying it because my doctor colleagues and my medical board in the state of Colorado are a bunch of criminals. The hospital-based systems, the big pharma and big chemo, these people are criminals on the level of Dr. Mengele. They, may, they would make any of the high priests in any ancient civilization cry for the horrendous horrors that have been perpetrated by these monsters. The hospital-based systems, the big pharma and big chemo, these people are criminals on the level of Dr. Mengele. They, may, they would make any of the high priests in any ancient civilization cry for the horrendous horrors that have been perpetrated by these monsters. For example, the war against pain doctors, and I, a good part of my practice is pain medicine, and the war against pain patients is because the government, the DEA and the Department of Justice, brings the drugs into America to the tune of half a trillion to a, to a quarter trillion dollars per year. You need to know the primary thing funding these weird projects like human uh, cyborg research, underground cities, off-world facilities, etc., and Star Wars-based weapon systems is not through oversight by the Senate Arms Committee of the Senate or the Congress. It is brought in under the military-industrial mind control complex uh, corporations, transnational corporations, and these secret brotherhoods who are above the government. And it was spoken of by Eisenhower. This is reality. This is not an imaginary thing. This is a real catastrophe we're facing. So, so I hope my thing keeps on getting sleepy. Now, you're not going to get sleepy on me. Uh, solutions to wellness. Now, everybody can see that. And uh, the types of pollution challenges, and we're dealing with toxic heavy metals and chemicals in the air, food and water. Excitotoxins. Does anybody know what it is? An excitotoxin is a toxin that excites your brain and makes it fire. It brings what's called an action potential. Xenoestrogens are molecules that look like hormones, but they aren't. Like xenoestrogen looks like estrogen molecules, so it's feminizing fish. It's feminizing men. In places like in uh, London, England, where they recycle the water, the xenoestrogens and the birth control pill and the uh, other chemotherapy and the other toxic things put in the water, like dump from uh, fertilizer plants and uh, fuel rod uh, production facilities literally is rewiring the brains of men. And the reason why we have so much prostate and other cancer, a good part of it is in fact caused by xenoestrogens. Sulfuryl fluoride, and sorry that was a misspelling there, but sulfuryl fluoride just, uh, is just approved spraying of our crops, which means you can get more fluoride by eating your veggies and brushing your teeth now. Fluoride is toxic and it destroys the pineal gland, which is the connection between the pineal, which is, of course, if you study, and I, I'll use the term chakra, although I'm not a Buddhist. Um, I've, I, know, I know information that's well beyond the uh, level of the Buddhists. But the upper chakra, if you want to call it, really is not a chakra. It's actually just the uh, point at which the silver cord is attached between your bioplasmic spirit body and your physical body through the pineal gland. And that connection is made through the pineal. Does that make sense? 
that uh, if you see water and why you look at all the sacred temples through all history, they're all made in the sacred architecture of Psi and Phi, which is why all the ancient societies had sacred mathematical schools. So you look at the Pythagoreans, the ancient societies in China and elsewhere, they knew that if you made archetypes and shapes of objects made of stone and other objects, including certain metallic ions and the mineral content of the, uh, they were able to actually create what's called scalar archetypes that could create certain biological effects. Does that make sense? So what they did is that's why you'll see, if you look at uh, Masu Emoto's work on water, uh, and uh, for example, one of the things that we'll be putting on our website soon are special wands from Global Light Network that can actually change the structure of the water to, to help with specific conditions because the way your body works is through scalar physics, and I'm going to talk about that here a little later in the second talk. Uh, electromagnetic pollution, thermal and non-thermal. We're going to have Dr. Carlo, who was hired by the cell phone companies to do research on it, and cell phones cause scalar interference. They have sideband microwaves and other frequencies that actually talk at the same frequencies that your cells talk to each other. And the way they talk, and the best way to think of it is if you think of the biomolecules as tuning forks welded to a rail. And if you hit one tuning fork with a pulse of energy, that energy jumps down the rail, and it actually jumps down the rail at the speed of light. It's a phonon, meaning a coherent sound, and it's a maser or mazed infrared light. So it has both light and sound properties. That's how all life forms talk to each other. The backbones of those molecules, the piperidine and the cyclical side groups, including the phenyl groups on all of the amino acids and side groups and um, altered amino acids along all biomolecules, create specific harmonic frequency spectra, which the concentration shifts depending on the concentration in the cells. And the cell membrane acts as a MEMBRAIN, which allows it to actually speak as a liquid crystal microprocessor. And your DNA is a downloadable core of memory. So in other words, most of your DNA is what's called phonon maser DNA. I know I'm speaking above the heads of some. But that phonon maser DNA, what it does, can you see that? The genes are controlled by stimulation or induction of toxins and nutrients. So if, you're, if you have these scalar signals from either minerals or toxins in the environment, they actually switch on certain genes and switch them off. So you can be hit by a light, by a sound, or by a scalar interferometry wave that can be created by a beat frequency using interferometry technologies, using microwaves and other technology. For example, when I came back from Georgia and worked from 1988 to 1994 in Halifax, International Airport at the Pratt & Whitney Jet Aircraft Parts Plant and the uh, AirTech Business Park, it turned out it was actually an offshore CIA-directed energy weapons project, not just making vanes for high-speed jet aircraft for the U.S. Air Force. <clears throat> what they were doing is making tunable sideband microwave frequencies that could be used to cause cells to go through apoptosis by hitting what's called the, uh, the uh, harmonic giant wave frequency uh, effects on DNA to cause the DNA to unzip the non-covalent bonding and cause cells to go through programmed cell death or apoptosis. Uh, they were used on the Abrams tank and the Apache helicopters in Gulf War I. Uh, what would happen after two to three minutes when Iraqi was hit by this up to five to eight miles away, they would go blind and start uh, vomiting. Within five to ten minutes, they'd start bleeding from all orifices. And within 15 to 30 minutes, they would be dead and all of their cells turned to slime because the cells would digest themselves. <clears throat> These would go through the side of a mountain building or tank, and they were quite a bit different than the crispy critters effect from bouncing depleted uranium uh, hot rounds that were pyrophoric depleted uranium that would burn at 4,000 to 6,000 degrees with nanoparticles that would literally turn them into crispy critters. Or the other weapons they tried in Iraq, which are called C3, which is a plasma gun that used a plasma bottle of uh, high energized plasma electrons at the target at the speed of light and vaporizes it at 11 million degrees, or other technologies which they use in Iraq, including focused microwave energies that can burn your skin at 130 degrees so you feel like you're on fire, or they can cook you instantly and make a 270 pound man shrink to the size of an infant within about 30 seconds. So they had all these technologies. They've also used what's called microwave bombs in Lebanon recently, well, along with the GBU 38. These microwave bombs cause a burst of microwave energy so anybody within a radius of, say, 150 to 300 yards, all of their organs will burst, not from a thermal effect, but from a microwave-induced organ explosion. And 
They did this on the people on the civilian populations as an experiment in conjunction with the Israeli forces. Uh, this is an idea of the extent of the evil of our government. And uh, the government is planning to use a lot of these, quote, non-lethal weapons, many of the non-lethal ones. Their definition of non-lethality is that it kills less than 26% of the people that are hit with the weapon. But they use a very wide range of, how can I say it, uh, fudging of those numbers, including things like tasers, which kill a lot of people. You need a lot more than that. You need a lot more than that. Okay, let's go on. Uh, so the membranes, the cell membranes actually are really interesting. The cell membrane is a very, a very interesting thing. Here we go. Okay. Now, so all organs, all organs and living things literally talk to each other. Now what happens is the new satellite system, the teledesic and global star satellites, actually are speaking now at the range at which your cells talk to each other and all living things like trees grow, coral reefs grow, whales talk. In fact, whales are an animal very similar to us. They live in hyperdimensional space, which means they don't just live in the physical world like we do. We also live in hyperdimensional space, but we're told that we don't, that we're not a spirit being. Um, they're often suppressed as children and told that you're not to, like, to be like that. Uh, I'm the way I am because I died when I was eight and a half and I don't know how to turn it off. And you'll see many children, especially children that have unusual abilities, they're often called star children and so on. What's happening is they're like the bubbles in the bottle I mentioned earlier. There's a number of individuals of all ages. They're like the bubbles in the champagne. They're rising like, like the avatars of the age because their spirits are quickening as they know that the age is about to go to a transition, but the general population level of consciousness is actually dropping. Um, <clears throat> what happens is there's full integration of this scalar signaling system in the cells of the body with the, both the chemical system like the uh, calmodulin and the phosphorylation systems and the enzyme controls and, um, and, the, and the actual operational cytoarchitecture of cells. So. Um, yeah, let's try that. I keep on trying to go down because the mic's there. Yeah, it's good. Oh, this is much better. Hey, oh, now I can talk. Um, why do you need to know this? Well, I, I spoke a little fast and it's advanced technology, but you need to know that Raymond Reif was exactly right. Uh, the problem with the Reif machine is you need to have precise uh, frequencies, and if it's not precise, it does nothing, or it can actually be harmful. Uh, they have bombs. The U.S. has had bombs since the 1970s, that, and so have the Russians. They're called scalar bombs. They can actually, if they release something like the avian flu, they can drop a scalar bomb and cover an area as large as maybe 1,500 radio miles, and they can kill a specific organism with a specific targeted frequency that will wipe it out. So let's say there was an outbreak of avian flu. They actually can drop a couple scalar bombs, and you wouldn't even know it hit North America, and those scalar bombs would actually explode, creating a scalar harmonic wave that would rupture every single avian flu virus, but they won't do it. I can guarantee it. Now, I'll give you some things you can do to protect yourself against a lot of these bioweapons, but the government doesn't want you to know that these same technologies used to kill could also wipe out most of the known diseases we have, extend human lifespan many, many times so people would be living centuries or millennia, regenerate organs, and stop literally all of the mental illness and other problems which are increasing because of the increasingly toxic world and the increased levels of electromagnetic and scalar pollution. So they don't want you to know this stuff. And they don't like Deagle for telling you. I'm not one of their good lists. I'm actually on the double black list, which means if they could kill me twice, they do it. Steps in anti-aging. Here, and I'll fix this up so you can see this. And there's, a button. there's basically seven steps. And I'm going to cover this because you need to know this because I tell people on my radio show, I try to liberate people one cell at a time, one neuron, because if you don't have a physical constitution, there's no point in talking about the constitution of the government. So if you're eating toxic food and brushing with fluoride and taking your regular flu shots, don't read the constitution because you don't have one. <laughs> in other words, you're not going to have a brain to think in a year or two or ten years anyway, so who cares? Uh, detoxification from chemicals, heavy metals. Uh, most of the heavy metals 
that are in our water supplies and so on now are literally trash burned in the third world where they have no environmental standards. Uh, we need to get rid of xeno uh, hormones, uh, chemicals, scalar and non-scalar pollution. You need to alkalinize your body. Uh, you need to oxygenate. When you alkalinize the body, the oxygen gets through the cells, the toxins come out. It also improves what's called the key or the bioplasmatic hologram of your body. The body actually has a, if you look at a Curlian photograph, which they can do in other things, and other advanced technologies, you can actually see the, if you want to call it the bioelectric hologram of what your cells are. And all the cells as they're connected through the tight junctions, which are four Angstrom J junctions, actually tell the cells how to become what they are. So only about 7% of your DNA codes for proteins, 93% codes for the hologram of what you are. Uh, remineralization. You need to remineralize your organs. Most people don't realize that their organ systems are all demineralized. Um, your organ systems, your hypothalamus and pituitary. When your pituitary and hypothalamus go, you don't release growth hormones. So you can't heal your organs. Your release of sex hormones, uh, DHEA, the control of your, uh, of your thyroid, everything goes. So if you don't remineralize your main pathways, especially in the brain and hypothalamus, you cannot heal. Uh, hormonal rejuvenation. You need to uh, be able to release growth hormone. Everybody makes plenty of growth hormone, but you need to be able to release it. Uh, you need to support DHEA. If you measure men's levels of DHEA, if it's low, they're at very high risk of heart disease especially. Pregnenolone and adaptogens like maca. Uh, genetic protection. You need super high ORAC antioxidants like goji, noni, acia, alpha R lipoic acid and beyond. And I have lots of other things. I'm just giving you a few examples here. Immune modulation and cell subpopulations. Uh, most people don't realize, and this is done with Dr. Ari Vujadani here in Beverly Hills, is a good friend of mine at Immuno Sciences, <clears throat> currently being given a little bit of rendition by the California Department of, of Regulation, trying to stop him from doing testing of sick buildings due to mold and other fungi. And the reason why is because Dr. Ari is the most brilliant immunologist probably in modern history. And he does advanced testing for our American Academy of Environmental Medicine, where I'm a uh, member and uh, teacher. And they don't want people to know that the average American is losing 3 to 5 percent of their immune system in all age groups per decade, and it's cumulative. So whether you're a 5 to 10 year old female or a 35 year old male, if your immune system decreases, your natural killer cells and your subpopulations of CD4 cells drop you're going to get Lyme disease, you're going to get cytomegalovirus, mycoplasma fermentans, you're going to get sick, and you're going to get cancer. And that's their plan. Uh, scalar holographic induction, morphogenic fields. I developed a machine 23 years ago, built 12 of them with a Canadian government grant that generates what's called a morphogenic field, and I worked out the quantum physics of how actually quantum biology works. And I'm going to hopefully have time to go down and talk to Dr. David Steenblock. He's a um, a, uh, the top uh, umbilical cord adult stem cell research doctor in North America, probably the top in the world actually. There's three or four other doctors, but I think he's number one. And he's been able to reverse things like um, uh, like uh, cerebral palsy by uh, injection of uh, stem cells that cross the blood-brain barrier using special techniques at his hospital down in Tijuana. He's been able to reverse congestive heart failure and renal failure. He's been able to regenerate brains after stroke and, heart and uh, other damage. Um, uh, we are on the verge, literally, of a revolution in medicine that's going to completely change the nature that will integrate natural nutraceuticals, detoxification, genetic molecular, and scalar holographic technologies. But the government does not want you to know this stuff. Because a smart 150-year-old that can play tennis with their great-great-grandchildren and can run two or three chess boards at the same time and read five books a day, is not a good thing for a government that wants to control them. My mother is 80, just was 80 a few days ago, and she reads five books a, uh, five books a week. She doesn't watch television. Uh, for every hour you watch television, you lose a point of IQ. <laughs> <laughs> and some people are in a deficit. They have like an IQ of minus 345,000. Uh, for every hour you watch television, you lose a point of IQ. And some people are in a deficit. They have like an IQ of minus 345,000. <laughs> Bacteria are a long way up, actually. Um, liquid activated zeolite. I'm just talking about step number one. Uh, this is an amazing product. It's actually 
a small little micro cage, and it'll actually electromagnetically or it'll ele uh, static electrically pull out through charges all kinds of sizes of molecules from uh, lead, mercury, cadmium, even depleted uranium. <clears throat> phase one and phase two detox enzymes. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, Kilorex, and another one's called BioCleanse. You'll see them on my website. Also, calcium bentonite clay. And they have the best calcium bentonite clay, the supplier that supplies Global Light that's on our site. And you need to remove these toxins from the GI tract. You can even use it around the dental areas and gums and so on. People really don't understand that most of the time the health, health professions don't want you to know all these things because if you're armed with this, then you won't need them very much. <clears throat> you need to remove stealth pathogens. Most people don't realize that diabetics and people who gain weight are gaining weight because... They have yeast in their gut, they've got uh, all kinds of stressors, and they've got heavy metal poisoning in their body. So you need to get rid of these yeast infections, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Uh, allicin, the first stabilized uh, molecule that's from garlic. Uh, Peter Jostling, who's been on the program a number of times. Uh, from We have Alamax US out of Chicago. This will kill all known pathogens, including Lyme disease, fungi, bacteria, viruses, and parasites. And it actually goes into the bacterial cell wall and will actually destroy bacteria. Even methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, vancomycin-resistant uh, Enterococcus, and a flesh-eating bacteria as well as Clostridium difficile, which kills between a, a third and two-thirds of a million Americans every year because of the filthy pigsties we call hospitals. And they won't start up. If I could walk through and do an analysis of any hospital in America, uh, I could give your trial lawyers fuel for decades, and they won't listen. I was, did infectious disease before I went into medicine, and it's absolutely obscene how filthy they are. Uh, super silver is an interesting nanomolecule that actually has been researched by the Infectious Disease Department of the University of Utah, scientists and uh, doctors in India and Africa and elsewhere. It will kill all known pathogens, including cerebral malaria, uh, Shagas, uh, spirochetes, viruses, bacteria, fungi, yeast. It's amazing. So I often will use what I call the one-two punch of allicin and super silver. And uh, you'd be amazed how many people will have inflammatory arthritis, autoimmune diseases, allergies, and other problems. And after you start clearing out these stealth pathogens, it just goes. Everybody who has recurring ear infections or sinuses, this is what they've got. Same with... Uh, Irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel just basically is the leaky gut, food allergies, and pathogens down there, like yeast. Um, step one, you need, a, I call H2, a hygiene, host defenses, operational protection. Um, I designed the uh, first defense uh, kit a year ago, a little over a year ago, uh, with the Lametco International and Keeman's Company in Colorado Springs and 3M Corporation. The first defense tabs are specifically designed to be able to block virus and bacterial tissue entry, and they're amazing. If you take these, they have a thing called polyphenon from Mitsuo Norin in Japan, the first and only stabilized magnesium ECGC catechin that literally their studies on Japanese males show that over 20 years, not one male in their study group developed prostate cancer. Not one male. So this is an amazing molecule. You can get other forms of green tea. We have one from Douglas Lab that's also a very powerful form because the polyphenon is temporarily unavailable while they get a product identification number in Canada because the Canadian Origin Biomed actually is a manufacturer for North America. But we have lots of amazing things. <clears throat> uh, defense wipes have lauric acid and nizin developed by, uh, uh, here we go, developed by uh, Jonathan Rothschild of Ecological Formulas. And they will kill all pathogenic bacteria that have been available in animal husbandry for about 25, 30 years. And the uh, nizin, then, they kill also all viruses, all the DNA, RNA envelope capsids of all DNA and RNA viruses. And they're totally non-toxic. You carry them in a Ziploc. They're biodegradable. They don't destroy the environment. And they don't do anything to your body. They don't cause neuro neuropathy or leukemia like some of the other cleaners we used years ago in burn units or hospitals. And immunite is an ionic mineral with humic fulvic and ionic silver, and uh, we also have a 3M mask in there. It's a NIOSH N100, and America makes the best masks in the world. We make the best of lots of stuff. And the NIOSH mask, the M100, is so good that it'll lock 99% of all bacteria and viruses 
uh, sorry, 99.67% 99 of all smoke, 100% of all viruses and bacteria, and it will um, completely uh, block also most of the toxins like heavy metals, volatile chemicals uh, as well. So it's just uh, pretty amazing. Whole leaf aloe, this is the best whole leaf aloe in the world. It's actually manufactured by for Lametco out of Tennessee. And it's one of the best radiation defenses and defenses against chemical weapons <clears throat> is you need to support your bone marrow. And it's interesting that a whole leaf aloe, which is similar to the polysaccharides used by miso soup in Nagasaki and Hiroshima is why people near ground zero survived. The, uh, the plants uh, that were used by the doctors in Japan were the reason why those people survived. Clean water. Um, we've got water that's 100% or total dissolved solids of 0%. And that is called a system called a pure water system. It has a linear charcoal, uh, the best RO membrane, and the best fluoride ion exchange matrix. So there's absolutely no NO fluoride. And if you're drinking fluoride, bye-bye brain. Uh, we also, if you don't have fluoride in your water, get a multi-pure. And that's one that I currently use because there's not fluoride in our water. We also have the Berkey with fluoride reduction elements, but if you actually test the water, you'll see a little fluoride gets through probably about 5 or 10%. But it's a lot better than, especially for a portable system. Then I add structured water, and uh, we're talking about Masuomoto. The best structured water in the world is made uh, by a friend of mine who just passed on this uh, past uh, summer, uh, RPA Biotech in Las Vegas. And an uh, interesting story, he was an investment banker who came back from Asia with this miracle water that healed his horse and he wanted to make it, so he put it $3.5 million in, had a vision one night, told the scientists how to fix it, and they ha now have the most stable, powerful, electrolyzed water in the world. And it's a um, Stan Schulman, my buddy Stan, who's now in the astral world. Pardon me? Stan was in his late 70s. <clears throat> he probably, uh, no, I won't speculate. Anyway, next is bioalkalinize. Uh, you want to have a bioalkalinizer from Biogenesis. It contains uh, some special minerals that you'll find in this special uh, water that you'll see that's often in the glacial uh, milk. Uh, cesium and rubidium. Uh, you can use topical magnesium oil, which is available from Global Light, and it's amazing because most people are sick because their total body magnesium is low. You can spray a, like 1-3 dilution with distilled water in your neck, trunk, and limbs. Uh, magnesium nano or magnesium torate. And magnesium is one of the most important. If I tell people they want to get better and they want to detox and they want to get over illness, they've got to get magnesium in their body. And the best way is actually topical plus a nano magnesium. Indiumese, this is amazing. This is the most powerful single anti-aging molecule mineral you can get. And there's only one company that makes it in America or worldwide. It's called Indiumese. It's element 47. It's a master anti-aging mineral. And it's the one that's contained in all the glacial milks of the world. So if you look for Indium, what it does is Indium is a chaperone mineral that brings all the other minerals into your pituitary, your hypothalamus, and all the enzymes in your body because the active site of every enzyme requires mineral. So if you look for Indium, what it does is Indium is a chaperone mineral that brings all the other minerals into your pituitary, your hypothalamus, and all the enzymes in your body because the active site of every enzyme requires minerals. And then my favorite uh, minerals, if you're going to get an ionic mineral, is Mineral Pure from Uri, which is the best Whole Foods company in, in the world. It's in, out of Utah. Uh, and Global Light Net Network's Ocean Minerals, and they have some herbals that are good for different conditions. Plus, you can use what we call their what they call their wand technology, which actually does scalar hyperdimensional uh, effects on the water. So if you have anxiety, if you have immune, you have other things, you can use their wands from Global Light and it'll actually restructure the water. So it puts scalar signals in your body. Now you can't just use signals alone. You can't just use Rife machines alone. You need to detox with real things. You need to put real nutrients like phytonutrients in your body. So anybody says one thing alone cures everything, they're crazy. It just isn't the nature of reality. In other words, prayer works, but you better do, do other things too. <clears throat> Scalar patches like the Life Wave patch you hear about, electroacupuncture, and light diode therapy. And Accutron, Darren Starwin's just developed this new system that will make millions of different colors of light. And the Accutron system 
um, will be available on our website. These uh, light diodes and electroacupuncture. <clears throat> and they're new technologies that I'll be developing with them that's the next generation of the Rife. And it'll actually give, be able to give a, a, a spectral signal. And my theory predicts that every disease would actually have a spectral signal and the solution for it would actually have a spectral signature that will neutralize all known diseases and kill all known pathogens. And it will be the next step beyond the Rife and I know how to do it. That's why I'm going down tomorrow to talk to Dr. Steenblock about this. Magnesium oil, topical bath salts, very, very important. If you want to get your body better, you need magnesium. It's one of the big five. Hormonal support. Uh, most people make plenty of growth hormone. They just don't release it. Um, good idea to get uh, amino acids to help you. If your first morning growth hormone is low, if you're in your mid-40s and you're tired or older, you have to assume you may not be releasing growth hormone. And you need moderate exercise of your large muscle groups. So exercise is a vitamin. Vitamin E exercise. Step four, DHEA and pregnenolone. Every male should be on DHEA uh, if he has a test done in the morning and it's low. Um, iota caps, women that develop polycystic ovaries and polycystic organs and breasts, they're all having a deficiency of a ratio of iodide and iodine. And um, type 2 hypothyroidism is a worldwide epidemic and it's getting more because of depleted uranium. So I recommend people get uh, things like kelp and biothyro is one of my best formulas that I recommend. Uh, you can do a Broder Barnes test, which is an underarm uh, temperature, or you can do a body calorimetry. And they have actually machines that will measure your levels of, uh, of uh, metabolism. And the calorimeter can actually measure how much heat and, and uh, metabolism you're generating. Hyaluronic uh, juices, very important. If you don't take good, raw, organic food, you're dying. If you're not putting anything living in your body, you're dying, which is why if you don't have enzymes, they dry these juices at URI at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, so the enzymes are alive even two and three years later. The oxidant, antioxidants and the minerals, there's living biophotonic energy. So if you do a curly and photograph of it, you'll see that it's living. As soon as you add healthy, clean water to it, you have a living thing. So I tell people as part of their food supplies, don't just get all dried food and pasta and stuff. You better have some Yuri stuff around because when disaster strikes, just like the ancient Israelites, the very first thing they had when they had their early ceremonies, the, uh, they called the opera, the, the, uh, they'd have a special ceremony when they had the barley life, the barley green uh, juice that they would make from the rising first shoots of the barley. And that would sustain the people planting the crops in the first part of the ancient Israel and the Middle East. You need a complete chain of antioxidants, alpha arlipoic acid, organic germanium, tocotrienols. There's a whole range of them, and uh, I can help you with decisions on that too because you can either call or drop an email, and I do consult. Immune modulation, um, the most powerful immune stimulator that I know right now at the least cost is Tiaga, and you can spell it two ways. The Tiaga tea uh, that Waywow makes in Utah, Cliff Whit Whitmire, is only $35 for six weeks. It is 50 to 100 times stronger than uh, any of the other immune stimulants that I know about, including um, uh, shiitake mushrooms and other natural killer cell stimulation and the CD4 cell stimulation. And cordyceps sinensis uh, made uh, that's already been uh, genetically uh, improved in, by breeding for Canada RNA. And another very good product for immune modulation is Torox, which is a, a biophotonic new energy um, diamino acid called benzoxy beta alanyl taurine and you can get it in liquid or pellets and what it does is it actually turns off the cytokines that cause cancer, autoimmune diseases and other uh, conditions by actually switching off the overactive parts of your immune system and, and turning on the underactive parts and it's a pretty amazing molecule. So it actually is a scalar signaling um, specially designed homeopathic that's actually designed to send a specific signal to your cells. Scalar physical and spiritual cleansing, sound health. And we've had, uh, we've had uh, Sherry Edwards on the program, and Sherry is an interesting lady. She is like, I try to tease her, I say she's a part dolphin. Because she actually can hear frequencies that the dolphins can hear. And uh, a number of us are gifted with all kinds of interesting gifts. Uh, when I was younger, I could hear super high frequencies as well. 
um, in the 50,000 uh, plus range, which is not normal. <clears throat> I think Sherry goes well beyond that. And she, what she was able to do is actually hear also low frequencies so she could actually hear the sounds of people's illness and their problems. And they started looking and real, realizing when they started doing studies of her, they realized that she actually could, if you want to call it like an intuitive, she could actually tell that all the illnesses were like a harmonic a sound scale and light scale. And out of that research, they developed sound boxes that can generate uh, frequencies to stop back pain, heal different conditions. And their, bio, their fractal analysis of your voice print, Fast Fourier, can actually tell you which biomolecules and toxins you have, what personality defects and disorders. That's why certain people may be codependent. And also your spiritual archetypes. And they can even pick up archetypes of a, so let's say, a near fracture of a specific limb that will even show up on the fractal analysis. It might be 30 days hence, which is why I try to tell people that you're a non-local spiritual being. And even in the, the uh, frequencies of your body is a reality that's before you and behind you. So our perception of present is just part of the illusion that we live in. Uh, and the Accutron light um, emitted diode color uh, light uh, Acupuncture is pretty amazing. It's a new technology that Darren Starwood has developed. He's just been traveling around the world. <clears throat> a new uh, microcurrent scalar therapy. So we'll be developing some new technologies that will be the next generation from the Rife. But, of course, the government doesn't want you to know these things because they'll say you're treating a medical disease. And it, and it always has this little disclaimer in all the vitamins. This is not designed to, to prevent or stop any illness. So we were not going to stop any profit flow into the medical system. Do not take this because it's just wasting your money. Of course. <clears throat> we know who uh, controls the medical schools. Uh, whole brain biofeedback. Earth Pulse Press and Lexicor out of Boulder has the best whole brain biofeedback if you want to get uh, the uh, both sides of the cortex going. Dynatens, uh, I developed this machine some years ago. We'll be developing a new version based on this. And the BioPro is an interesting thing. You can get pendants that will stop scalar signals from hitting your body, whether it's from microwaves or other things. You can get chips to go on your cell phone, or you'll see on my laptop here I have a chip, a BioPro chip. It stop, doesn't stop the energy. It takes out the sideband scalar frequencies that literally cause crosstalk between your cells. If you don't have these and you're within close proximity to computers or cell phones, you're literally cooking your cells. And uh, a cell phone is actually inducing an enzyme in your brain called ornithine transcarbamylase that generates inducible nitric oxide synthase and actually creates peroxynitrate that cooks your glial cells and makes your brain cells die. If you don't have these and you're within close proximity to computers or cell phones, you're literally cooking your cells. And uh, a cell phone is actually inducing an enzyme in your brain called ornithine transcarbamylase that generates inducible nitric oxide synthase and actually creates peroxynitrate that cooks your glial cells and makes your brain cells die. So if you're listening to your cell phone with it on the side of your head, you're cooking your little noggin. Don't do it. And we're going to have Dr. Carlo on the show soon, but we have a ton of information. So when they sell you cell phones are safe, the proof in Zurich, Switzerland, is it's illegal to sell a cell phone to a child because the side that the cell phone is used has three times as high incidence of cochlear, eighth nerve tumors, and leukemia in these children. So when they tell you it's safe, it's because they're making money, and that's cool. And then if you need a consult, this is how to contact me. You can call me at 888-212-8871. And, um, you know, this is not medical care. It's only informational and educational, but uh, your decisions have to be made with your wellness provider and your doctors and uh, hopefully this will uh, provide you some options and I'm trying to teach doctors because what I realized when I was teaching medical students in Colorado I'd ask them advanced biochemistry, internal metabolism, all kinds of physics they knew very little. What they knew is they knew enough that when the cheerleaders come bumping in from Big Pharma to tell them the latest drug that will cause somebody else to end up losing the ability to think straight and have erections that they will sell lots of it. So that's my next talk, and then the big one's coming after that. So if you have any questions, we'll give you a couple of minutes, and I need a break because the Energizer Bunny needs to sit down for a minute.
This talk is Questions for the End of the Age. Now, most people that go to these talks or read all the myriad books over the centuries, they're always looking for answers. And what I want you to start looking for tonight is not the answers but the questions. And I'll, t I'll show you why you should only be looking for the questions because the answers are often staring you back straight in the eyeballs or they're known by your spirit but your mind has blocked it so you won't know it. You're literally in a state of unconsciousness. And when you hear what I'm going to tell you tonight, it won't just inform you like I did in the last three talks, talking about the electronic cage and the, cons the uh, conspiracy reality. So every time you hear the words conspiracy in the future, I want you to think, not theory, but conspiracy reality. Okay? I've spoken tonight as a doctor and a scientist, and now I'm going to be speaking also as a prophet. And like a prophet such as Moses, Isaiah, and Yeshua HaMashiach, I'm going to show you that the ultimate solution is not a technical one, and it's not an information war. It's a spiritual war. Whether we're dealing with a galactic federation, or whatever you want to say it is, it's the Russians, it's the Chinese, all of the problems are solved by asking the right questions, not the answers. The answers will become very evident very quickly. And that's what the problem is, is that we haven't faced that. Do you feel the quickening? And most of the people here, probably people that have logged online or are going to watch this later in a DVD, and if you have friends, get the DVD. Copy the DVD. Get it to as many people as you can because if they don't understand that the asking the right spiritual questions and stopping the balkanization based on religion or on color or on nation or on anything, on money, is the use, is the dialectics that are used to destroy our world. And the masters of our world are very evil. They're indwelt by astral beings. We might call them demon-possessed, uh, as in other cultures and religions call them. But in fact, what they are is they are astral parasites. We call them trans-dimensional demonic beings. And that's where I mentioned earlier we have to understand that our world is ruled by spiritual powers and principalities that are beyond the mind of man. And in higher cultures and other civilizations they know this. And why do people sense a massive change in the nature of our world and why the central theme of the end times? You hear it over and over again, cataclysm, why? It's because all of our religions, all of our books, all of our histories have known Deep within our DNA, within our psyche, we know that cataclysm is the very basis of the nature of our world. It's not an anomaly to have a tsunami or to have a global pole shift or to have an ice age. It's actually the nature. Mankind has 23 genes that do not exist in any other mammal. We have origins that are not from this world. We are a very ancient being. And not only our physical body, but our spirit body, we are eternal. We are literally made in the image of the Most High God, whether we're a little child like my daughter was 14 with Down syndrome, or we're a grandmother, or we're a person that's black or brown or yellow, whatever, anywhere in the world. We also have to not only respect all human life, but all other life forms, because the biophotonic and the scalar energies that they generate literally allows our bodies and our world to exist. So when the great whales are being destroyed as they travel through their whale pathways, which our ships know, they won't change our shipping lanes, which they could move very easily because they are killing all the great whales. These frequencies that they generate actually generate a scalar hologram that allows our world to exist. So literally, the scalar matrix that allows like our body to exist, if you infuse the body with scalar energies from a directed energy weapon, or you shut off the normal scalar frequencies that allow your hologram which makes your cells what you are and make you literally physically exist, you fall apart. And so our planet is dying. The coral reefs are dying. The oceans are becoming acid. We have 200 dead zones. There are now uh, the, uh, the uh, ozone hole over Antarctica is the largest it has been in history. And then they want to blame global warming on us driving the gas guzzling giants that the oil industry gives us, which is a lie, because we could have 300 mile, mile an hour cars, we could have water engines, we could have um, Tesla engines. In fact, I talked to one gentleman who we'll be talking to uh, later this spring. He's going in production here in California with a Tesla engine that has no moving parts. And uh, I've actually got his patent, so it does exist in the U.S. Patent Office. There's all kinds of machines. If you look at Tom Bearden's work, 
Uh, zero point energy is zero, the very nature of the universe. Everything above the fourth dimension is part of the singularity. And the best way to think of it is think of the four lower dimensions as four strings, okay, and the fifth dimension and above to the twelfth is part of what's called a singularity. So this point in the fifth dimension here on this table is literally at the same point on the other side of the galaxy. Okay, do you see what I mean in the fifth dimension? And so you have to understand the sixth, the seventh, the eighth. And what's ho going on is those strings are literally sounding on like a musical instrument on the body of the scalar instrument of the higher dimensional plane. So when you see things like crop circles, what you're actually seeing is the energy being burst from the ionosphere coming down toward Earth and carrying hyperspace archetypes and actually displaying them like images on the ground. So you're actually seeing a transmission of higher dimensional intention that's being translated into intelligent shapes when they're burned on the ground. Does that make sense? So when you see images that show positions of the planets or images of things that look otherworldly, it's because they're from other worlds. Right? And the big thing of the apocalypse is, is the unveiling is that we are not the center of the universe, that mankind is not the only sentient being, that the earth is not, you know, they used to say in Copernican uh, ideas that the sun rotated around the earth. Well, I need to say that God does not rotate around man. <laughs> there was a statement to be made tonight. Man is literally made in the image of the Most High God, and we are the children of the Most High God, and they've stolen that. And I'm going to reveal to you tonight the reasons why the answer to that question is the only solution that will allow us and a remnant of our populations to be sealed with the seal of the Most High God and to go into the next age. There was a statement to be made tonight. Man is literally made in the image of the Most High God, and we are the children of the Most High God, and they've stolen that. And I'm going to reveal to you tonight the reasons why the answer to that question is the only solution that will allow us and a remnant of our populations to be sealed with the seal of the Most High God and to go into the next age. And what does catastrophism have to do with understanding our world geopolitics and climate? Well, quite a bit. Why do most people sense a massive change in the nature of our world? Well, what is the nature of mankind? What is a man? What is a woman? What is a human being? From whatever culture. And if you look and you listen to the shamans and the people of all these different religions, they all think they have the pathway of light. And I'm here to say that religion is always a substitute for relationship with the Most High God. You need to know the pathway. And everyone who has a formula, whether they call it the Buddhist formula or the Christian formula, they've all perverted the message. And the real issue is, and the clearest message ever given was by Yeshua HaMashiach, who said, when I return, you shall be as me, and even greater things you shall do. For when I return, you will be exactly the same as me. The real issue is when we go into the bathroom in the morning, we are looking at the Messiah. But we need to realize the reason why evil grows, whether it's geopolitical or medical or legal evil, it's because we have separated responsibility and authority. We have the responsibility to take back this world. And we have the authority. We've given it to fools like George Bush and his junta. We've given it to above government transnational corporations. We've given it to organizations who have made treaties with entities who have given us technologies from other worlds. They have traded in human flesh. They have done cosmic evil on a proportion and, an, and a magnification that's beyond the range of the most evil imagination. And it is real. It is not a deluded uh, fabrication of my mind or any other mind. It's a, it's a fact. So the understanding of the nature of what we are and the nature of consciousness is central to solving all the problems. So the real issue is the ones who should lead are the ones who should be the philosophers. Not the military leaders, not the politicians, and not even the billionaires. It should be the ones whose spirits are tuned to be the gardeners of the garden. The gardeners of the garden must be the only ones who lead because they who do not garden kill and eat. So what the nature of consciousness is really key to understanding the right questions, and it's not the answers we should be seeking, but the correct questions. The reason is the answers are always known, and I'll show you why. 
Why is the central theme of the end times in all religions through history? Does it appear that all the leaders of all the international banks and corporations and national governments and all the higher education are keepers of this hidden knowledge? Why is that? In fact, believe it or not, only 4% of all knowledge in all the universities is actually public. 96% has been hidden away in vast libraries like the libraries of Ajurbanipal. The Vatican Library is the largest library in history. Ancient books from all the civilizations on Earth underground in their catacombs in their main Vatican Library, and they have it hidden away for the Jesuits. They know all these ancient technologies. They know all these things. All, a lot of the, the things that were literally plundered by the Nazis were then salted away in the Vatican Library. And it was Nikola Tesla's father who had access to this library that knew the sacred geometries that allowed him to develop the hydroelectric generator and many of these other technologies. <clears throat> Is there a power in the dialectic of chaos and presentation of the false solutions that move the body of mankind toward a predetermined destination of ignorance, impoverishment, and subjugation? So they're doing it. They're actually the masters of chaos the dialectics of balkanization to dumb us down with sulfur fluoride, with scalar technologies, with excitotoxins, with mind tenderizers. Are we approaching the nexus? And I write this nexus because I was told in the spirit this is the term for it, which is a place not only in the galactic plane where we have returned to, but it's also a plane where we're giving the same test that was given to an ancient culture almost 12,000 years ago that had a war. They've proven this. This is a chemical fact. There's nuclei in Ashurbanipal, India, and in the areas of, of uh, Saudi Arabia and Yemen where there was a nuclear war, and there's an area in India that's over 12,600 square miles where they've proven the only thing they could have done it was not a meteor or a comet. It was a nuclear weapon. We know that these cultures were very, very advanced, and they were asked the same questions, and they failed the test. And their civilizations of Lemuria and Atlantis died. And we're at the same point. We have the Asian cultures of Lemuria now lining up on one side of the battle plane by these evil lords of Atlantis on either side of the Atlantic. The British and the Americans and Canadians and the Australians and all these Western nations all getting ready for the battles of Ar or Har Magadan, which means the, to the place where all the troops are brought together. Why? And why are we reaching this? Well, because, number one, we're receiving the, the uh, precession of the equinoxes. We're actually moving to a point in civilization. And if we look at this all-seeing eye, we can see what role does catastrophism have in understanding world geopolitics and climate shift? Well, you've heard talks by people like uh, Tessarian and others, uh, Jordan Maxwell and other experts. All these things have been embedded deep in our cultures and they're in our history, but it goes far beyond that. Not only is catastrophism the basis of religion, they actually move things like the Book of Revelation and the ancient cultures toward Pahanuk, which is the ancient Sumerian ceremony that they would perform, or the ceremony of the phoenix and the high priests in ancient Egypt, because they were preparing and ushering it forward because they knew they wanted the death of the, of the phoenix and the rising of the ashes because their power was, was created by the force of dialectics. So they are the ones building the underground bases. They are the ones sacrificing to their astral gods, which they have, the human race on the coasts, or to uh, depleted uranium, or to deadly vaccines that will fry our brains, or to nanotech foods. They are about to sacrifice billions uh, to their astral gods, which do exist in these higher dimensional planes. If you don't believe it, I'm sorry you don't know that reality. And the dark hand of evil has ruled mankind systematically through our, for years. And they've always pulled out the best and brightest. I was approached three times by the Pindar. Three times. The Pindar, his name means penis of the dragon. He is the leader who rules over the council of the 13 Druids directly under Luciferic control. He is the highest level on earth. And when you understand these things, like many of us, we could have turned toward the dark side. Thank God I didn't, not only for your sake, but for my sake. And uh, I asked, one, one lady asked me one time, how do I know I'm saved? They have this, especially Christians, they have this idea of, how do we know I'm saved? I said, are you in fear and trembling that you're doing the will of the Most High God? And she said, well, not really. I said, well, then you're not. 
In other words, if you're not concerned about your fellow man, if you're not concerned about your world, and you think you're going to get raptured away from here, I want to vomit. If you think it's okay to kill other people, whether they're brown-skinned, yellow-skinned, or a different religion, I want to vomit. If you think your religion justifies the genetic modification of food and the destruction of the young minds with depleted uranium uh, or uh, ethyl mercury salicylate or your medical profession or your legal profession thinks it's okay to do administrative renditions on whistleblowers, I want to vomit. And you will be bound together, and I say this as a prophetic warning, you will be bound together into your prisons deep in the rocks of the earth, as it says in Revelation 6, and they shall hide themselves from the face of the Lamb and from the Holy One. And when the earth shakes and grinds like a, like a hut at, Ma, at, at a Richter 15 to 20, and your hyperspace technology and your advanced tunnels with Mach 2 uh, super trains and your underground cities are so secure while we're frying and we're hitting with tsunamis and global earth changes, they'll all be entombed in their rock graves deep in the earth in the bowels of hell. And your hyperspace technology and your advanced tunnels with Mach 2 uh, super trains and your underground cities are so secure while we're frying and we're hitting with tsunamis and global earth changes, they'll all be entombed in their rock graves deep in the earth in the bowels of hell. That's their future. So don't think you can hide yourself. The only thing that'll save you won't be your guns, it won't be your bad attitude, it won't be your bullets or your physical prowess. It'll be your spirit. And if your spirit tells you to go to the left and you want to go to the right, you better listen to your spirit. And you better do a lot of praying, people, because if you don't become centered, and that means not me telling you what to do, but you finding out what your God wants you to do. It says, to those who are going to die by the sword, they will die. And to those who are to, to, to be imprisoned, to those who are going to be martyred, and there's going to be a lot of martyrs, they're going to be trying to tell the others, this is what's coming. Because we are not years, we are months away from catastrophe. Look at this. Climate shift, mass species extinctions, geopolitical collisions of empires of total domination, invasions of consciousness. This is what we're facing. When we're talking about this tonight, we're talking about them literally invading the cortex of the human mind. The vertical rise of technologies they call the singularity. The post-human, transhuman species, they literally want to replace us. People think, well, I'm so good. I don't care if you're a billionaire. Do you have an IQ of 20 billion? Do you have a mind that is now meshed with a supercomputer array that can know everything about everything that goes on the planet? Do you have a lifespan of 20,000 years? Can you travel across the galaxy and advance technology with other civilizations? Well, I don't think so. So therefore, if you don't recognize what you are as a spirit being first, our civilization will soon end because we will not join the galactic if you want to call it civilizations. We are in an infant culture about to learn to walk, and they're looking and say, look, look, he's going to walk. No, no, oh, he's going to fall down the well. Are we going to walk or are we going to fall down the well? And it's all dependent on these questions. <clears throat> what evidence supports that we are not alone? Every religious book has talked about the seers or the watchers. I call them long-standing, intelligent, foundational entities. They call them the Ben Elohim in the Bible. Suppressed NASA, SETI, Vatican telescope evidence, all kinds of evidence that we have not only at higher dimensional beings that are astral, we call them demonic, whatever you want to call them, but there are beings in all kinds of civilizations across our galaxy and our cosmos and universe, not only from somewhere, but from some when. And that may be from the past, present, or future. We should not limit ourselves and our minds to understanding the nature of our universe because those who do not know whether we cross the nexus, not asking these questions is a formula for death. Um, so it's not an optional thing. What evidence supports that we are not alone in the universe? Well, this is like uh, the original list of the Majestic Twelve. And I have people, I mean, I won't go too far down the rabbit trail tonight, but I want people to understand that I have people that want to talk, but they say they don't want to destroy everybody's religion by telling them really what's going on when they go to deep underground military bases. They don't want to really destroy and terrify people to let them know that they've actually been trading human flesh and why hundreds of thousands, 
and millions of people disappear every year from Eastern European and America and elsewhere in the world and South America disappear into underground facilities, off-world bases and other places for experimentation, genetic engineering, and as human veal. They need to know that a lot of this technology and a lot of the evil, it sounds occult because it was. These entities, if you look at the, if you want to call it renditions of the, where people disappeared, so-called taken away by ETs, uh, in, in converse, converse to uh, Mr. Greer, Dr. Greer, they're not all nice. There's nice ones, and there's not so nice, and then there's really damn nasty. And you need to know that we need to be a little bit more discerning. It's like going down to South Central LA. I'm sure you wouldn't go there unless you knew what you were doing. The Thule Society and these people channeled, and again, I've, I've mentioned this before, and there's various individuals that are doing things that I consider very damn dangerous, such as people like Dr. Fred Bell. And he opened up some astral gates using advanced scalar and sacred geometry. These are dangerous. If you play with fire, you're going to open up rents. And that's what they did when they did the Philadelphia experiment. That's what they did when the Nazis opened up these astral gates and they let these astral vultures and, 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 and parasites come through this gate. Most of the technology that the Nazis got was through channeling. It's not all a good thing. You should be aware that when you're playing with fire, you may well get turned into a cinder. Okay? So... They were seeking stargates. In fact, part of the reason why they invaded Iraq was they were looking for the ancient stargate that was actually at the ancient <laughs> museum in Iraq. And there's another stargate that's in Iran, which is one of the reasons why they want to get to Iran, because there's another stargate there. They understand this technology of sacred geometry, and these monsters, these idiots, want to open more stargates because they get, get more channeling and more technology and more converse with these entities, they gain more power. That's why when you look at the technology and the writings of people like Blavatsky and the Theosophists, you say, these people were like uh, Harry Potter. They're uh, occultists, Kabbalists. Look, the Kabbalists, the Kabbalah of, of Babylonia is simply a use of scalar technologies and sounds to summon, summon uh, astral entities. They're no different than warlocks. Let's call it what it is. They're just warlocks. And they might say it's good, but it's not. What evidence that we're not alone in the universe? Well, there's a real picture of a U.S. Air Force tunneling machine. Now, that's really old technology. The stuff that I talked about with John Fiala, who's good friends with Phil Schneider, the ones now are tunneled at 120 to 140 foot rock face and go 12 to 14 miles per day. They can either make a matrix city or they can make a unidirectional tunnel. And these tunnels uh, literally lay an inner core, the subsidian, and then they put an, uh, an inner core that's locked down with a megalev track in it. They vacuum them out, and these tunnel trains actually are traveling at Mach 2.0 to 2.8 underground between places so they can cross the United States in less than 35 minutes. They connect all the major parts here. They go underneath the oceans. They connect all over the planet. And when Phil was actually going through one of these tunnels with, uh, uh, with uh, John Fiella some years ago, many years ago, they broke through one of these tunnels. It just turned out that the tunnel they broke through was already cored and built three to 500,000 years ago by another civilization. God knows what kinds of creatures, whether they were inhabitants of Earth or visitors, but our world is a very old world, and the very idea that somehow we're only 6,000 years old is asinine. Uh, human beings, uh, you know, to believe that we're living in a young universe is absolutely ridiculous. And if you actually look at the genetics, and I'm a scientist, but I also am a spiritual in person. I synthesize two, the two together because I call them the two witnesses. And if your mind, which is sharp as a razor, and your spirit, which is open as, and flies like a dove, if you have the two, you will truly discern the truth, but you need to sharpen both. And if your mind, which is sharp as a razor, and your spirit, which is open as, and flies like a dove, if you have the two, you will truly discern the truth, but you need to sharpen both. Probably. Probably uh, 
Probably human beings are somewhere between half a billion to several billion years old. We are probably originated on an ancient star system long, long gone, or stars that have long gone supernova. So. Well, I don't know. We, listen, if there's a, let's put it this way. Our civilization uh, started trying to uh, clone human beings in 1927. The, that's the Nazis. They succeeded in doing some occasional clones in 1957 and were very efficient at cloning genetically engineered super soldiers in the Moscow Institute for Biological Research in 1982 with Russian and American scientists. These soldiers, their plan was to actually create super soldiers that would have the genes transplanted for the muscle M zone so they would have to accident in myosin of the most powerful mammal known, which is a jackal, so they could run at 30 to 35 miles an hour and jump 20 to 30 feet carry a 300-pound backpack, and literally rip someone's heart out with their hands. Uh, that's in, in, in super fast reflexes that are beyond the range of normal human capacities. They're planning on creating these super soldiers, so our people who are listening who are special ops in Delta should realize that they have an operational plan, and I've got all the documents. It's called NBIC, Nanotech, Bioinformation, and Cogno, to replace humanity with a super being and uh, to literally just keep us in the dark while we just die off. Well, I'm here to say they're liars, they're thieves, and they're going to go. And we need to start extending human lifespan, healing our children, stopping cancer, stopping heart disease, and we need to stop this idea of allowing them to think that they're going to control human reproduction and turn us into a obsolete species, because we're not. We're made in the image of the Most High God. We don't use a billionth of a capacity of our, of our current being, and our nature and our spirit. We don't use it at all. Whether we're healing or we're creating intention to create, you know, uh, gardens or worlds or healing our bodies, we don't use a billionth of our power. And I saw this. And because I've been gifted, there have been people that I have prayed over that have been miraculously healed. Like Mark Taylor, who was the first kid shot in Columbine. He came, I came into the hospital three weeks after I saw him and I put him into the Little Porter Hospital and... Uh, Three days before, I told him, I said, you're going to call me in three days and you're going to be in agony because the antibiotic I've given you will uh, organize the abscess that they missed at the university hospital. I told radiologists exactly where to put the catheter because I'm a medical intuitive. And he did. The radiologist went on a CT scan, put the catheter in, and three weeks later, he was walking around with a PCA pump with fentanyl and he wasn't getting better. And they said, we're going to have to cut out four ribs and we're going to pack your chest open in the ICU. And... Uh, you have a 25 to 40 percent chance of dying in the intensive care unit. So he cried and cried, and I prayed with him. I said, you know, God, you're going to have to come through now. And our God is God. That's just like Nebuchadnezzar had to say to Daniel. And I say to you today, like Daniel, who's been in the lion's den, in with these bastards, in with these reprobates, like the Attorney General's Office of Colorado, the Board of Medical Examiners, the military, the Air Force, all these people would threaten me when I wanted to take care of our troops based on the idea that they were exposed to dangerous vaccines and depleted uranium. I am not afraid of you. I'm coming for you. And I'm coming for you not to harm you, but to give you the truth because you're going to die first. You are actually sealed with the seal of death because the sealing of the Most High God, the sons and daughters of the Most High, is about to start very soon. And that sealing process, if you don't understand this, it is going to seal you with the death that's coming with the end of this age. It's coming very, very soon. Anybody familiar with this picture? First contact. You just look at what are the goals of the old world disorder? Well, a fully integrated consciousness of all individuals on earth, a hive mind, casts of genetically engineered nanotech and biologically enhanced transhumans. And they're already doing psychotraumas. A lot of the media, including I call Hollywood, is actually trying to psychotrauma you because they have this all planned. Most of the people that are writing these scripts and so on are feeding it from the NSA and above government agencies. And many of them are channeling this from other entities that have malevolent intentions against humanity. <clears throat> so don't think channeling is all good. It's not. Indications that such a culture would be subjected to a higher alien society with evil intent toward the individual nature of man, freedom of creative and deterministic thought, and promulgation of true electronic cage of mankind and consciousness. And they're doing it. And the biggest thing that I call the devil, or if you want to call it the devil-like societies, or these, quote, ETs, or I call it IFEs, identified fiendish 
extraterrestrials, you should realize that they're not imaginary. They aren't. Sorry. The tiger that you don't believe is a tiger that can eat you. Because he'll still lick his chops after he chews you up and swallows. Is there evidence that the New World Order is alien, transdimensional, demonic? Of course it is. Every religion in history has known this, but somehow our society, being very Cartesian, doesn't know it. To their own detriment and to the laughing, hoodwinking of the globalist morons. Even George Bush, just because he's a moron, he happens to be of the bloodline, so he knows a lot of these things, and he's kind of laughing at us, even though he's an idiot. Project Omega, conceived by the Nazis, and George Bush Sr., by the way, isn't an idiot, neither is his son, Jeb. They conceive these things, because Project Omega literally is doing it, and they've advanced treaties that have done unbelievable things. Yes, do we have off-world bases? Of course we do. We've had a parallel space program since 1963. We have been doing parallel launches from Vandenberg Air Force Base here in California uh, and on the East Coast. They do parallel launches and monitors from uh, Houston. And 80% of all the space projects have been for military purposes, including low Earth orbit satellites, star-based weapons. And, of course, they have an entire city on the moon, which they always blot out that's doing mining for helium-3, which is used for nuclear fusion, for interstellar travel, and for advanced energy technologies. And, of course, these corporations all control the helium-3 because there are 100,000 times more helium-3 on the moon than there is on Earth because it has a different origin than the planet Earth. Aurora Space Engineers contact uh, on USS uh, Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe hasn't been gone. Believe it or not, they didn't surrender. The SS did not surrender with the secret treaty of Fort Hunt and the rat line brought by the senior Jesuit officers and the cardinals and the pope, they brought them all over here. In fact, they're under the control of them. The Jesuit general. It really is true. Even the largest telescopes in southern, the southern hemisphere that are monitoring the entry of Lumbiro are totally under the control of the Vatican. We have a Mars colony has since 1982 and plans for terraforming five different Planets and moons in our solar system have already been operationally started. Okay? This is a fact. I was flying back um, three years ago from New York City. And I was sitting beside a senior Sony executive in New York, up in first class. And I said, well, what's new with Sony? And he said, well, we got this new, you know, supercomputer. It's a laptop. And I said, oh, that's cool. I said, I'll bet it uses... Micro laser optic logic. He said, how did you know that? That's classified. I said, my buddy that worked at Signal Saturn Systems, who was a senior NSA, and a guy that used to knock off sleepers after World War II, uh, had one on his desk in 1962. And it wasn't human technology. Most of the technologies that you think that we have did not originate in the human mind. These are technologies that have been transferred and trickled. They have technologies that are so far beyond the basis of the human mind and imagination, you can't even imagine it. And it wasn't human technology. Most of the technologies that you think that we have did not originate in the human mind. These are technologies that have been transferred and trickled. They have technologies that are so far beyond the basis of the human mind and imagination, you can't even imagine it. And, of course, uh, a lot of these technologies also have been taken out of ancient libraries. They had... Electric lights 3,000 years ago in ancient Egypt. Did you know that? They had batteries. And going back even further, if you look at the technology necessary to build the, the uh, ancient temples like the uh, Temple in Baalbek and the ancient pyramids, they can't be built today. How could they do it? Because they had advanced scalar technology and technologies that we don't imagine because we're arrogant and think we're the most advanced culture and we're actually just a culture right before the time that destroyed Atlantis and Lemuria back 12,000 years ago and there were probably previous cataclysms for more arrogant peoples who thought they knew better because they had advanced toys. What's this? Where did the saucer technology? Well, it was channeled. A lot of this technology, when, they, when it was discovered, all of this was transferred to the Skunk Works, to General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin, all these other corporations 
the Aurora spacecraft or, you know, the Model Ts now, they got stuff that can go sublight and beyond the speed of light. They got stuff that you can't even imagine. All of this stuff is real. And I know I've talked to the pilots. I talked to engineers that actually work on the Aurora spacecraft. They tra travel uh, from 5 to 12 Mach. Then they see the, uh, the, uh, the speed of 17,000 miles an hour to leave Earth. And then they go sublight. Sublight speed to the moon. Okay? Mind control technologies, HARP, ELF, scalar weapons. They use these in Fallujah and Najaf. They even had a thing called a SWORD, which is an operational robot that if you didn't have your dog tags, they lock on your thermal signal and they kill you, women and children, with both lethal and non-lethal weapons. Of course, it's lethal if you die, but they call it non-lethal because you might not. They're putting in Britain a thing called these te uh, Tetris tower systems that are going to be able to, to lock on with your cell phones and your national ID they're going to force the British to have so they can hit you with a microwave weapon. And the British are masters at microwave death. The British have killed more people with microwave death. And I can guarantee you that this uh, Ledvininko was a uh, knockoff by the British because they've been trying to overthrow the Russians because the Rothschilds that are based in London are not exactly happy with, Alexander, with, with Mr. Uh, Vladimir Putin. Mr. Putin has said, I'm a Russian and I believe that... Uh, uh, that we, are, we want to have a Russian empire again. So it is an empire of clay and iron, which is why my website is called Clay and Iron, because it has strong parts and weak parts. It is the last secularist empire, the last secular empire of our world. And religion is secular because it doesn't face the reality of what we are as a being. We have you know, cell phones like the Nokia system with directed energy to affect our minds, affect our bodies. They can cause heart attacks and strokes. Here's a picture of the main Vatican library. That's the one above the catacombs. <clears throat> I know the people that were right there in Roswell. I actually transferred the bodies. Saw the technology. Saw the bars made of metal that what didn't exist. Sorry, you know, people might say, he's a nut talking about this. I don't care. I happen to be a cosmic, messianic Christian, which means I know that my God which is a God of a billion galaxies and a billion, billion worlds beyond the scope of anything, cares about me and about you. He's that great. And I say he, and the reason why is I don't say because of a sex, male or female, I say he because maleness means separate from the creation itself. God is beyond the creation and above the creation and looks down upon it and is beyond time and space and all dimensions. And disinformation programs are the smoke of a fire that love lies and hides the true nature of, of contacts, all the contacts. Trickle down and release technologies from above government and transnational corporations, reverse engineering to military, and eventually distant partial civilian release. The uh, technologies that we have is a faint shadow of the reality of what we really do have. Well, is it a physical or spiritual war? Well, it's both. This physical war is uh, circumscribes our time-space perception of consciousness. So people always want to think of the now in terms of locality, but in fact, what we are as a being is we're a non-local being. And we're, we are the thousand points of light. They have appropriated that term because they are the, the thousand points of darkness. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to steal away our understanding of what we are as a being. And if you look at string theory, the lower dimensions like the plucked strings in the body of the instrument are all the higher dimensional planes. Photon entanglement means if you separate a photon, you can actually have in hyperspace the negentropic force, which is the hologram, actually constructs and deterministically makes matter and space and things occur. So when they did their experiments down in Montauk and they actually made their little monster, they actually created this out of hyperspace archetypes, just like when the energy is coming down from the space from the ion field and it creates the crop circles, all it is is hyperspace archetypes being imprinted upon the Earth. It's not little spaceships trying to spin around and make little things so they enter to entertain us. They're actually seeing hyperspace archetypes translated across the dimensional uh, void. And when there's a rent, which they can create with a nuclear or a scalar war, which is why our conflicts in our planet cannot be allowed to happen. It can have effects on a cosmic level. So we're dealing with some very, very serious things here that are well more than you can imagine. 
Is it a physical or a spiritual war? Well, the wall between the physical and the spiritual will disappear when we are enlightened to the true, complete nature of the singularity of universal consciousness. I'm not talking about the kind of consciousness where I don't exist anymore. Sure. I exist more because I understand what I am. And you exist more, but I also understand the connectedness of all of us because we're a corporate being. We are all part of the same being. And we literally, as all the spirit beings of the universe, we sing a song that literally creates all possible realities. And as we understand hyperdimensional physics, the nature of the universe and the interaction of consciousness and reality, reality is literally our spirit body, our bioplasmic body made of spirit water, of hyperdimensional water through the, the silver cord, literally moves through this collage of images that creates the nature of a timeline. And a timeline is a teaching. It's a story. It's a, it's a legend to speak to our spirit, to make us as shards of the broken mirror so God looks back at his own face and sees a small shard of light and understands and then is able to experience himself. So the whole nature of the universe is God experiencing himself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Revelation will transform our world and will make us not realize we're separate, whether it's from other human beings or other advanced life forms that exist in our galaxy. And the problem is our current religions will not stand it which is why I've been called to speak as a prophet now. And my ancestor was, was one of the uh, sons of Aaron. Our family were converted to the first church in Antioch. And my family, in the first century, were given a prophecy that there would be one come that would speak and say and announce the coming of Messiah HaMashiach, but not an external Messiah, because as Yeshua HaMashiach said, who was the avatar of the age of Pisces, he says... Eli, Eli, Labasavakhtani, which means Elijah, Elijah, where are you? He didn't say, my God, my God, where are you? I've forsaken you. God never forsakes anyone. If you call out to the Most High God, His Spirit and your Spirit, because you are one. And that's what they're trying to do with all these religions, whether it's Buddhism or Christianity or Judaism or the Kabbalah. They try to steal the identity of what you are. You are a precious, infinitely valuable reflection of the God of this universe, whether you're a little embryo of a child about to be born or a little child that's just been blasted with a directed energy weapon in Iraq or Afghanistan or a Muslim trying to pray, you are a child of the Most High God and you should be treated with that kind of level of respect. Or a little child that's just been blasted with a directed energy weapon in Iraq or Afghanistan or a Muslim trying to pray, you are a child of the Most High God and you should be treated with that kind of level of respect. And that's what's been happening. There's a world has had a great darkness, just like the land of Mordor with the Trilogy of the Ring. After the Nexus, does Homo Universalis have spirituality or religion? Well, the two are completely anathema. You have, if you have relationship with the Most High God, you have no religion. You may have knowledge and wisdom from it, just like Yeshua HaMashiach was trying to teach us the way. He was not trying to teach us a formula. He was trying to teach us for us to get on the road, on the way. And that's why they changed it. In fact, Domitian actually said to the first, he called them Christians, meaning little anointed ones, which is a blasphemy against the one who was the teacher of the way. And then they elevated him up with the Romans. and They said, ah, we'll turn him into a pagan god. So he's so much above them, they'll never be like him because they're not his brothers and sisters. What they are is they're just lowly scum that we will keep separated from their identity of what they are. And all of these people have known this. In fact, many of the people even who, who made this diagram, Leonardo da Vinci knew it and he hid it because he belonged to these sacred societies. And they've often been inducted, a lot of these brilliant people into them, so they can be used for evil. How critical is, this, is it to know this good news? The, it's called the gospel or the good news. Without our full identity, our world will die. Our oceans are dying, our coral reefs, our planet is dying. The oxygen level in some of our inner cities is down to 10%. At the turn of the century, it was between 18 and 28%. Do you think that people will be able to live except in domed cities in 10 years? Do you think that we'll be able to live in a world full of depleted uranium circling the planet after a nuclear war against Iran? Do you think that without the oceans teeming with life in 2048, well, there's no living fish, that we will have dead zones where the entire planet's dead, that we will be alive? 
This is the end of the age of Pisces and it's the start of the age of Aquarius. And I come to speak to you as, tonight to, to, to say, just like Moses, today choose life because he set the twelve tribes, six on the Mount of Ebal and six on the Mount of Gerizim, on the Mount of Blessings and Cursings. Today choose life. And he's not, I'm not trying to preach a religion. I'm trying to preach a spirituality and speak spirit words because the answers are not a technical one. Whether we're talking about scalar technologies or nutraceuticals or medicine or stem cells, the answers have always been there. They've been in the Gila Archeon. Some people call it the Akashic Records. The actual term is called the Gila Archeon, which is the storehouse of all knowledge of all sentient beings through all eternity. It has always existed. Every great scientist who have made a discovery, his bioplasmatic body went to the Gila Archeon, he went to the records, and he saw and experienced and was there in the eternal now and knew in his gut and then translated into mathematical equations the truth of what he already knew. No one has ever discovered anything. They have only rediscovered what we have always known. Through all civilizations, through all eternity. And without understanding this, we will not transition from a global infantile entropic civilization to Homo Universalis. Joining the course of the uh, Congress of Universal Life, which is the advanced life beings that live millennia, it is not a technology that will save us. It is not a religion. It is not even a leader. It's the people that are listening tonight or watching the video or the DVD. It is the people who are the avatars. They're the bubbles in that bottle of champagne that when the hands, the intention to put on the hands on the bottle, those bubbles are already rising to higher levels of understanding. And you need to speak not to the general population, but to those who are the change shapers, the people who are respected, whether they're policemen or military or politicians or world shakers, for them to choose today life. Because they may be billionaires, they may be powerful, they may be physical specimens, they may be brilliant, but they're all dead meat. Unless their spirits are enlightened to become homo universalis and get to know who they are, which is a reflection, a child, a son or daughter, a ruler of this universe. And the real gospel is not that Messiah is coming externally like a hologram over the horizon. The Messiah is in the mirror when you get up in the morning. We need to take responsibility and authority instead of passing it to fools like George Bush and the minions of evil. And off-world IFEs, identified fiendish entities of whatever type. And you'll hear all kinds of words about greys and reptilians and whatever. There's all kinds of things going on. They're beyond the mind of man. And some of you might believe it or may be entertained. These demonic entities have been here since time immemorial and have been invading our planet. But it is the last time our civilization will have to face this. We will either pass this test because our technologies are more horrific and more deadly then even at the time of Atlantis and Lemuria, we're either going to ascend and become a true age of Aquarius where we live for millennia and we are know the Most High God where there is no religion because there is only a knowing. As it says in the Bible, no man shall preach to his brother or his sister to know God for every man will know the Most High as the waters flow upon the sea. Everyone will have an ever-present knowledge because anyone who doesn't will not even draw breath. They have to know this, that in places like Azerbaijan India, when these things happen, man has genes and so on that shows that we have signatures, we have footprints, we have things that tell us that we are a very distant and ancient people, but we have not passed the test in the past. What we have done is we have descended to destruction, to balkanization, to evil, to depleted uranium wars against our own civilization and all living things. What are the ultimate questions? Well, is man alone in the universe? Does man have a purpose? What is the origin of evil? Why is their civilization so evil? Well, it's so evil because there's transdimensional entities and astral gates. And because there's evil beings in the world that are constantly at war with those civilizations that are good. How can we meet this challenge? Well, we can meet the challenge first by becoming aware of who and what we are. Does the Most High reveal the way? Of course he does. I'm not telling you what to believe. I'm telling you to start trying to believe and start trying to ask the questions, not seek the answers. Because if you seek an answer and not the question, you lose your identity. 
Is man alone? Well, we look at the hierarchies of being. Look at all these fractals. You can see here from the infancy of the universe uh, to the cosmic adulthood to the Grand High Council of the Eschaton. There is a council. That council is met over this world and we are hanging in judgment. And they're beyond our space time. And there are serious things happening in this world that people have no conception over and our world leaders are quivering jellyfish. They know, right back to Truman and Eisenhower and all these fools that knew and predicted these things and have not talked squarely to the public. But I come before you today and tell you, whether you're a movie star or a politician or a world leader, listen. Because I come before you like a prophet, like Jeremiah, before Israel was destroyed to say, Repent, O Israel. Repent, O world. For if you do not turn today, then I bring a sword and I bring bomb. I bring healing and I bring judgment. And my words are not just a physical word, it's a spirit world. Not just brought to you from a human government, but brought to you from a place from the Most High. And my words are not just a physical word, it's a spirit world. Not just brought to you from a human government, but brought to you from a place from the Most High. And from the Eschaton, and from a world that you cannot understand. But you must. And if you do not, and if you do not understand how serious these times are in these things, you will be faced with an annihilation and a death that will be so horrific you can't imagine. When I died, when I was just eight and a half from a tonsil procedure, and I went down the tunnel of light, and I saw Yeshua HaMashiach, and he had a white gown on with a double-corded belt and a broad gold sash, gold trim on his edges and so on, and he could see he was very, he was olive-colored skin, had reddish hair, beard plucked out, broad shoulders, muscular. And he said, don't cross the silver, the, the, uh, the little bridge that appeared across this clouded area, or the silver cord will break. And I said, why? He said, because you won't be able to return. And I knew instantly, it was almost like I always knew, but my spirit was in a state of unconsciousness. Just like today I'm speaking spirit words, so your unconsciousness is time to start going. And because you're here tonight, or you're listening, or you're watching this DVD, I am saying, awake, O oh, avatars of this age, O oh, people, to know that this is the time to awaken your spirits, to open your spirit eyes, to open your spirit ears, to feel and know the truth that I'm speaking is not just words of wisdom and truth, but the truth. And if you look at what the churches say, and it's very basic, they talk about this areas of responsibility before God. And they do it generically. And if you have a look at this family, have kids, educate them, provide for them church, proclaim the word. You know, good intentional people, you know. Disciple adults, provide for the needy. All good, very laudable things. State, administer justice, defense and infrastructure. The chief responsibility you have to do is to know what you are and be a human being, not a human doing. And the, the void between responsibility and authority is the ground upon which all evil grows. Because we have been cowards, because we have not been afraid to live for God, we will not be allowed to live. Because if you fear man, you can't fear the Creator God, and if you fear God, you cannot fear man. And you have to know now that the, only the fearless will take the next stage. Only those who seek the Most High will even draw breath. If you look at the Mayan calendar, you see these cycles. Yes, the Mayans understood this, and they had a society that in many ways is very evil, but they did have an intuitiveness, just like many of their priests that take things like ayahuasca and DMT. But you have to understand, when they open these gates as if children walking into a mortuary, they see horrific things and they don't understand it. They see the universe as cyclical. Yes, it is. But it's not deterministic. We can choose our future. We can choose to have a world with peace, a world without disease, a world without want, a world without pollution and dead whales, a world where we as higher beings will literally hear the songs of the whales with our own entity, our, with our minds can communicate with the living things that we grow. We can start to become what we really are, which is a gardener not just of our garden here on earth, the Eden that we were given, but a gardener of the galaxy. Because that's what we're called to be. We're called to be the gardeners of the galaxy. And if we look at the 
real challenge. The spirit worlds of wisdom are hyperdimensional light. So what I'm speaking tonight, and you can probably feel it. If you can feel, if any of you is an intuitive, you can feel a bell. I call it a spiritual bell ring. And you can feel vibrations. Those are coming from me. Because the Most High is saying, you are a servant of the Most High and you'll speak those words of truth and that vibration, that bell will ring in your spirit and if the others have the spirit of wanting the truth, they, like a harmonic bell, will ring to it as well. So if you go into, say, a Buddhist monastery or a place where they have bells or they have the wheels, you'll notice that there's a part of you that just vibrates. And I'm hoping tonight you hear the bell that the Lord is ringing in me, the Most High, that he'll ring it in you because our world is dying. Our people are dying. And they're about to put us in electronic cages, to put in underground prisons, to destroy us, to eat us, to consume us, to genetically modify us, to crush us, and to cut us off from the nature of what we are is a wonderful and a glorious being made as a ruler, not a servant, a ruler of the universe. That's what we're facing. How can we meet it? You have to understand the nature of what we are to remove the fear. He who knows the Most High cannot fear any other life or life. You can't fear if you know what you are. Because all that happens is if I die tonight, I just go home. I'm not, I can't be killed. I cannot be killed. And Moses understood it. Here you have one of your Hollywood stars. All the prophets of all the religions had portions of the truth with mixture. The mixture always came with the people who took the religious truths from those avatars and twisted them to turn them into political or religious institutions to subjugate people and steal their identity. Moses was the first to understand the revelation that all mankind was supposed to be children of the Most High. He could see forward as a prophet the coming of the Messiah Hamashiach, the avatar Pisces. Well, I come today to speak to you as the announcer that was prophesied in the first century to my family in Lebanon, in the area of the ancient tribes of, of Aaron, that our family was told that one would come, his name was the Shidrach Hadrach, the blessed one who would say, yes, there will be a Messiah come, but when he comes he will be looking at Messiahs, us. And if you don't understand that, our world will die. Our world will die because we don't hold sacred the little children that are dying of depleted uranium in, in Lebanon. Or the children and people that are dying of infection and pestilence in these other countries that we plan on irradiating with nuclear weapons in, in Iran. Or the people in Kosovo and these other countries that we have no conception for. Or the fact that the flight paths of British Airlines are spraying weaponized avian flu over China, over directly over the flight paths, and that's where all the hot spots are for these bioweaponized avian flu that these monster scientists have made to weaponize and attack China. And if they don't think the Chinese, and I know this is a fact, have weaponized strains that will wipe out all white males, W-A-R-S, white, Anglo-Saxon, rich, scum, I can guarantee you they do. And the same thing happened in ancient Atlantis and Lemuria. Who starts it first and who finishes it? Is there a winner? No. As one person told me a long time ago, the, <clears throat> the war between the Israelis and the Jews will end when there's only one Jew and one Israeli left. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. It's insane. Emmanuel was God with us, was the first fruits. Did the early Christian church understand what Yehoshua HaMashiach meant? Why is this important, understanding scalar technology? It's important because we don't know what we are, we don't know where we're going. As I've always said on my radio program, and I tell them that's why it's called the Nutramedical Show, liberating one neuron at a time, and clay and iron, if you don't understand what you are, if we truly knew what we were, we would never do what we're doing. All roads do lead to Rome. All kings and rulers are subject to the Jesuit general, the Black Pope. Zionism is just an apostate arm of the Babylonian Talmudic Satanism subject to the Vatican. Spiritual dark lords of blood and sexual sacrifice are identical with the Ives, the identified fiendish entities. And they exist in the astral planes and in the physical. 
You can't imagine the horror of knowing what I know. And I won't tell you the full extent or you'll just be bawling and crying if you knew what I knew. But I can face it because God has made me strong enough to stand before you today knowing that if I die tonight, even though I have a loving family, I will have served the Most High God and I will have served my fellow man because this is the end of our age. There is no future left if we don't fight this. There is no future left if we don't fight this. It's the last secular empire. That's why it's called clay and iron. Without a new revelation of consciousness, man will perish with the earth. The relationships with the Most High God burns off all falseness of religions and substitutes a relationship with a, a, that gets rid of all the spiritual disinformation. That's the only way. That's what Yeshua HaMashiach was preaching. The gospel. The way. He was trying to teach us that we're his brothers and his sisters, not his subjects. And it says, and I'm going to just summarize this, I shall write my commandments on the flesh of your hearts. That's what God said. It was prophesied through the Old Testament and through the New. No man shall tell his brother or sister, Know the Most High God, for you shall have a knowledge of the Most High God as the waters of the seas cover the earth. And relationship of the fusion of the spirit being Knowledge and purpose is the only solution that will save us and our planet. Thank you. It's a little bit late, but I'm going to I'm going to take about uh, I'm going to make six questions, and we can't have more than one from one individual. So we have six hands up, and I'm going to answer six questions. And uh, do call into the radio show. It's on RBN and um, RBN Live. If you uh, want to get a hold of me, you can also contact uh, through Michelle at the triple eight number triple eight two one two eighty eight seventy one, or uh, you can send a feedback to uh, Nutramedical. But um, if you have suggestions for people on the show, do contact us. If you have friends that have classified information or important information or perspectives, do contact me. I'm always open, but I, too, I, I don't necessarily put everybody on because I'm led by my intellect and my spirit. And you need to be led by both. You have to have the two witnesses, a sharp intellect and a discerning spirit. And when you have both, you truly become a son of the Most High God or a daughter of the Most High God. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, please. Uh, you mentioned that uh, some powers uh, tried to destroy all crops and fields. Uh, my question is, they, uh, this will destroy them too. Yeah, I know. The, the, you can't see the logic. For example, if you look at the uh, release of the avian flu, the fact is if you make vaccines, the virus keeps changing so quickly that unless you're using something like advanced scalar weaponry, they're not going to stop this. It's going to continue to mutate. It's like insanity. George Bush's squinty-eyed daughters are breathing depleted uranium too. George Bush breathes depleted uranium. These people are fools. They're indwelt by demonic entities. We have to face the reality that is hard for the regular population to understand that demonic obsession and, and possession really does exist. But it exists in a way scientifically because people have to understand that the separation of science and spirituality is all based on ignorance. The real universe is a real universe. It's not just an imaginary archetype in your mind that's a good way of coping with the nature of the universe. It is a reality. These beings really do exist, both in the physical flesh and on the astral planes, which is why all the higher level Masonic orders or the black dragons or the higher level Buddhist dark monks and so on, all of them are indwelt by demonic astral entities. Yep, go ahead. Yes. Are there transdimensional beings who are on our side helping us? That of course there are. Mm -hmm. Of course there are. There are, uh, there are very advanced civilizations and beings. Uh, they call them angels. The mean, angel means messenger of the Most High God. 
Now, for an ancient society 3,000 years ago, it's very hard to say to a shepherd that someone's from a specific star system or from a different time, space, or some when, not just somewhere. So it's very hard to explain to someone, but for our advanced culture, we should not be so naive to think that God does not have the sons of God. It says the Ben Helohim cried with joy at the creation of the earth. The fact is that we are a, a, a uh, juvenile society, a boat to walk, and they're all looking at us to see if we'll walk or die. And they're there trying to not interfere, but the angels are there. We might call them angels like the in the angels that they mythologize through the Middle Ages or they draw wings on them. But uh, these advanced beings exist. They, everybody's always known them. Back through the Middle Ages, right through the Middle East, they say if you have a stranger, you make sure you treat him well and you feed them because you never know when he may be an angel. Uh, so, of course they exist. Everybody's known that. Anybody who says they don't believe it just hasn't read any history. Are they creating and guiding the star children? Well, those, all those, when you're talking about the star children, literally uh, we as spirit beings make decisions as to where, where we are uh, incarnated and where we exist. And uh, when you're saying they're directing them, of course the angels are there. When you talk about guardian angels, some people had an intuitive knowledge in even these other religions like the Catholics and so on. They understood, and the Buddhists, they knew there were positive, uh, if you want to call it spiritual entities that are in harmony with the Most High God that are, of course, trying to intervene. Why do you think the earth is not just total chaos? If it was, listen, with what I've been underground with these facilities and what I know is going on, the only way that we could even have this meeting tonight and I could even fly my jet in here even though my, my other bag didn't arrive is because there's angels trying to fight against it. I had so much opposition to come here. I traveled in 1999 to 42 cities in Israel and through the 90s and before. Uh, cities all over the U.S. and Canada and I've never had such opposition as trying to come here to speak today. And the reason is... We're coming very close to the signing the peace treaty that's going to partition Israel and the uh, city of Jerusalem. And when they sign that peace treaty, count the clock. Because the sealing of the sons and daughters of the Most High will start on day one of them signing that treaty. And that sealing will end at exactly 1260 days. So you're hearing that today. If you go on my website, you'll pick up and you can see this, the first two chapters of the small scroll. The first one, the chapter I received back in 1998. The second chapter I released in, in 2003. And there's ten more chapters to be released. If you read that, you will read not the words of a man, but you read the words that were given to me by the Most High. And they're words that will speak to you and make you understand and cry for what's going on in our world. People are always looking for a technical answer. They want to be entertained with archaeology or pictures or artifacts. What they have to know is that they need to stop looking outside and start looking inside to their spirit because if they ask the right questions, all of the answers are already in their spirit because they're children of the Most High. And when they look and they call them star children, we're all star children. We're all star children. They're just getting, starting to open up. They're like the bubbles in the bottle. Little children opening up their eyes. My little daughter with Down syndrome, she, she knew when my uh, son's wife was pregnant. She just put her hand on her tummy and says, said, Naomi's pregnant. Naomi's going to have a baby. You know why? She's my daughter. I'm a medical intuitive. I can tell and feel people and, and help them thousands of miles away. I don't need to be with them. And the reason is, that's the nature of what we are. I'm not different. I'm the same as you. Those parts of my being have just been opened up. And what I'm trying to say tonight is we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. We have to stop being mechanistic Cartesian uh, men and women that are machines. We're not a biological machine. We're a supernatural super being. We are an eternal super being that needs to start facing that reality or our civilization will die. We're a supernatural super being. We are an eternal super being that needs to start facing that reality or our civilization will die. How yes. do we open up these new areas that are open to you? And I mean, the, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm trying to do more teachings on my website, my show. The second thing I'm, I'm going to do too is I can pray with people and I can also, uh, with time, and it has to be them being drawn to be prayed 
what I do is I pray for them firstly for their name. And their name literally is like a trajectory. It's like a, it says in the Bible, it talks that they shall be given a white stone with their name on it that uh, only them and the Most High shall know. And it is like it, their way. So when you tell someone that they have to have religion, what you really should be telling them is to start reading from their book of life, which is their trajectory, their name, which is their spirit name of what they are. Their book is a very large book. And that's the problem is people are expecting to have a pat answer. And so what they need to do first is they have to start seeking. Once they seek enough, people have called me and said, well, I'm ready to receive my name. I said, no, you're not. You're not ready. I can tell. My spirit can tell they're not ready. When they're ready, they'll know that there's a, a ring in their spirit that they're ready to know their name because taking your name means you have a trajectory. You have a responsibility. When I took my name, I knew I had to let my practice go. I had to let my fear of death go. I had to let my fear of never seeing my family go. I had to know that for me to be what I am, which is a prophet of the Most High God, I had to speak out and say things that were so shocking to my professionals that they would think I was insane. I had to speak out and tell whistleblowing things that were so upsetting that people would say, how can you say that, even if you've got proof? So it's a journey. And you get on that pathway. A lot of people say that they're ready, but they're not. What they need to do is they need to get in some very serious prayer and cry out for what they are first. And then when they're ready, come to me. Call me, and I'll pray with them. They can be a 1,000 or 10,000 miles away, and I'll tell them. And once they start get acquiring their name, and once they start feeling that, that the, the Spirit of the Most High enter them, then they'll start acquiring it. They don't need a formula. They don't need to go to a temple. They don't need to pay any money. They don't need to join a church. What they need to know is they need to start having the pathway to their pathway to the Most High. That's what they need. Because anything else is mind control. So, so how do we get to the rest of the sheeple? The first thing that people, as they say, they're looking for the answer like you're looking for an answer now. What I want people to do is start looking for the questions. That was the chief thing that I was trying to say tonight. You need to look for the spiritual questions. Once you look for those spiritual questions, the answers were always there. They were there in your spirit body before the framing of the universe. Your bioplasmatic entity that was you was always there and always knew the answer. Right? Any other questions? You're welcome. All right. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> I'm sorry I tired you out so much. No, no, not at all. <laughs> well, we hope you liked that presentation of Dr. William Deagle. Yeah. Uh, I know you guys are a little tired. Uh, you don't have to worry or being rushed out. Take your time. And uh, we do have probably copies of this uh, tonight, believe it or not. Our next uh, forum at the Granada Forum will be Dr. Stanley Monteith in February 2007. We want to thank you again for tuning into the Granada Forum. For those who saw us, we're still working on a few little kinks, and we'll, we're getting better. Thank you, America, for viewing. Um, again, uh, happy holidays, uh, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. We'll see you for 2007 for Dr. Stanley Monteith. Thank you so much, and God bless. Yeah. Next time I come, you'll see me, you'll see I wear my tallies.